in a month's time, that doctor's office prescribed me over 200 pain pills. And it got 7.5. Then it got to 10s. Then it went to Dilaudid's. Then it went from fours to eights, all within a month. And what year was this? 2009, 10. Yeah, 2009, 2010. Because I was actually working for my stepfather at the time at his dental office. And I got fired for forging scripts. I got caught because the woman who put my information in at my stepdad's dental office had my birth date wrong. I always considered myself a functioning drug addict because I always worked. I was a bartender make good-ass money, and always had pain pills. Wes refuses to be a statistic. Pharmaceuticals were a part of his downfall to serving jail time. But once released from the cold walls of the local jail, his outlook on life, sometimes through the use of psychedelic mushrooms, is a colorful one he decided to share with us today on this episode of Chopping It Up. What's up, Wes? What's going on? Thanks for coming, bro. Thanks I appreciate for having you coming me. through. You was actually excited to do this, man. I like it when people say they're excited. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. I've never done anything like this. So it was like, hell yeah, let's do it. That's what's up. Hey. That's what's up. So I want to get your story, man. Let's start where you wanted to start. You want to start when you were young. So let's get it. You know, when I was young, I was raised good family. We were all pretty close, but I was always like the black sheep that would get in trouble real quick just because I, I act off impulse. Right. And I don't. Typically think things through all the way. I just do. I was like six years old getting the neighbors calling the police on me for our basketballs would go over into their yard. I said, fuck it. I'm going over there and getting it. Yeah, why not? They they called the cops on me. So then finally we called the cops and we were like, man, they won't give us our balls back. Da, da, da. They went over there, got 28 basketballs. No way that they had held. Yeah. Punks. That, that's his people are assholes. Yeah, man, that's some asshole shit. And it was like, you know, they had a nice yard and house and everything. What's my little ass footprint going to do? Right. <laughs> so the cops were just a stun. They were like, wow, 28 basketballs, like six tennis balls, some baseballs. It's like an episode of The Sandlot. Bro. Yeah. This is yeah. Sandlot with no dog. It, yeah, no dog. Just some old, rinkety ass woman that was a uh, mean ass. Ugh. Meaner than hell. <laughs> Hated kids. That, Sounds like my dad's ex wife. Oh, man. Or my dad's wife. Well, then it's funny because shortly after that, then I got in trouble for doing prank phone calls. Okay. And Star That was the thing. What year were you born? I was born in 82. Okay. So, yeah, prank phone calls were a thing because we still had phones nailed to the wall. And, and we had the telephone booths. We had, you know, a little ring. But right. Right. That's when uh, Star 67 first came out, too. I and, remember that. That and, was how you could get back to the person yeah. that called. Yeah. Well, Star 69 was to get back to okay, them, Star but 60 67 would block your number so they couldn't. Okay. But somehow they still were able to trace it, the cops and everything. I think I was 11 or 12, and I got like my first charge for prank phone calls. What did they charge you with? Uh, pretty much, I, I I couldn't even tell you, but it was the guy that kept answering, like somebody in his family was sick or something like that. And I didn't know. I just thought it was some idiot that just kept answering. Right. And so, you know, we got a little stupid with it. We're young, stupid, just calling, saying stupid shit. And, uh, yeah, my mom wasn't too happy on that one. Early, early on getting in Early, trouble. early. And we went through the same dumb shit where we, like, let the air out of tires. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Knocked on doors and ran. Shit, we uh, used to uh, put uh, Apple under the brake on the school bus. Okay. So when the bus driver go to hit the brake, can't get it at first. You got to slam it. In just order to smash the. Smash the oh, Apple. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, not funny joke, huh? No, 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 not until <laughs> they finally catch on, and then they're just like, "But we didn't have cameras back then either, so it was easy to get away with shit." Yes, it was definitely a different world. Yes, absolutely a different world. No so, tattletales. Like, how, how was school and shit like that? Did you do good in school? Did you get in trouble in school? So with school, I I did well if I had a teacher I got along with, right? And like the teaching skill. I had honors classes my first uh, year in high school. I had honors biology. I missed the science fair project because I had gotten kicked out of my house, and that counted for almost half of our grade. Okay. My teacher, Mr. DePaulo, was so fucking cool and knew what was going on with me. He was like, Wes, I'm going to do this just for you because you're a great student. You know, you had a 97 all the way up until this. 
He's like, I'm going to let you do some extra credit and I'll count that as your science fair project. So I was like, all right, cool. But if I didn't get along with the teacher, I either slept or just didn't go. Yeah. I never once passed health class. Hmm. I hated health class. That was the dumbest class. I, don't know, I think I probably ended up going the same way. I did pretty good until like sixth grade. Yeah. When chicks came in. Oh, and, yeah. Game changer. Yeah, bro. That was like, totally different. I mean, I, I lost my virginity when I was 13, when I was in sixth grade. Right. And, you know, then, you know, I hated how everybody has that stigmatism of marijuana is a gateway drug. Bullshit. Trauma. Trauma is a gateway drug. Okay. Alcohol. Alcohol is a gateway drug. Al- you're going to do more dumb shit with alcohol than you do pot. All day long. And how- It's interesting because we didn't even talk about weed or anything like that. Uh, I brought a joint to smoke because I didn't nice. even know if you smoked. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can probably take a puff or two. Right, but we'll, we'll wait till we get in yeah, a little bit. Absolutely. But it's just cool. I think it's cool you brought that up because I've been talking to a lot of people about, uh, um, God, I got this chick I'm going to bring on, but she's talking about like it's it's a substitution plan. Instead of that mm-hmm. abstinence of AA and NA, it's like a substitution with marijuana type thing that's more accepted among the community of recovery people now. Well, and, and that's the funny thing is that they actually have rehabs now to get people off of opiates, which I was an opiate addict for 10 years. Right. And to where they'll go to like these, like it's almost like a damn resort and they're eating like edibles and stuff like that to help with the nauseousness right. from the opiates. And it, it, how it was ever classified as a Schedule One blows my mind. Yeah, you're crazy. saying no medical value. Yeah, and when you're comparing it, yeah, when yeah. you compare it to the other drugs that you know are what they are, man, yeah, it's exactly. Totally story. So when did you start using opiates? What was your drug of choice? So my drug of choice for over ten years was opiates. Okay, uh, oxys or heroin or any kind of opiate. You're well, like me, you don't care. Well, it first started like I had surgery on a cyst that was on my tailbone. And bro, if you just brush past me, I was almost in tears. Yes. It hurt so bad. And when they did the surgery, the extraction site had to be left open. And my baby mama had to cut this like cloth looking shit and pack it in there twice a day. I'm upset. That hurt. Mm. Yeah, that's. In a month's time, that doctor's office prescribed me over 200 pain pills. Because at first they gave me like 3.25s. I'm like, I don't have a headache. Right. Then it got 7.5. Then it got to 10s. Then it went to Dilaudid's. Then it went from 4s to 8s. Yeah. All within a month. And what year was this? Shit, this was back in 2009, 10, yeah, 2009, 2010, because I was actually working for my stepfather at the time at his dental office, and I got fired for forging scripts. I got caught. All right. Fucking fat bitch at CVS got me, because the woman who put my information in at my stepdad's dental office had my birth date wrong. No way. Yeah. Gotcha. They were down in Florida. And a fat woman called him and was like, uh, we have uh, Mr. Reagan's here uh, getting 10 Percocets. And he was like, no, 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 no. So he called me up. He was like, go back to the office, lock it up and, you know, leave your key. Yeah, right. Oh, man, that was a whew, fun conversation. <laughs> so uh, how fast, like, I mean, I feel like that progression was quick. Like, they started oh, yeah, you yeah. out with something small like that, and you're all the way up to DeLaud. It's like, are you just eating them at this point the whole time? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I never really became an IV user until, like, about the last year, year and a half of my addiction with opiates. Uh, I would always, and it was so weird, for, like, the first five years, I never had withdrawals. Like, all my buddies would be like, dude, how the fuck do you not, not withdraw? Sick. Yeah. Well, because, you know, I do it on a Monday. I wait again until, like, Wednesday or Thursday. But when I'd get it in, I'd get it in. But then the day fucking Opanas came into my life, huh. It was over. Over. So you started snorting before you injected, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Right. There, there's definitely always a eat, snort, yep. chew. If it doesn't go that way, something weird happened in between. Yeah, exactly. And, like, you know... I never wanted to do needles, but oh my God. Like you feel that feeling. Describe that feeling. It is the best euphoric feeling you will ever experience here in your life. I'd put it over sex any day. I'd put pretty much that 
then like pure ecstasy, like the real e pills back in like the late nineties, early two thousands. Yes, that was a good one. Oh Some my god! Snacks. And then, uh, yeah, so j- you just melt. Like you don't have a care in the world. Like if you've ever seen the movie Train Spotting, where he like takes a hit and he just lays down and he like sinks into like the floor. Mm-hmm. That's you all day long. That's how it is. And that's how I want it to be every time was to be like nodding the fuck out. Right. Because that was my euphoric state. And my wife at the time, she would take videos of me nodding out. Yeah. And then she showed me and I'm like, God damn it. Why do you do that? <laughs> right. Because uh, I've taken a few and I've seen a few of myself, but I think it's because that's some motherfuckers trying to tell us like, bro, look how pathetic you look. But the, the sad thing is she's doing it too. Right. But I'm not an asshole. I'm not going to videotape right, right. you. I've definitely uh, videoed a couple of my buddies. <laughs> I had a buddy of mine in the garage and I got a video of him and shot it back to him next, you know, after he come off the Zan, he's like, here, yeah. bro, this is what she was doing in my and, living room. You and, know? and, you know, Zannies are so fucking horrible, man, because if you mix that with opiates, like you, you're just trying to go to cardiac arrest yeah, and die. And that's the, that's the best part of the bus. So it got, yeah. to, it got to the point for me, like Xanaxes wouldn't hit the button. The Lauders wouldn't hit the button. Yep. When I put them two together. Oh, man. And press that motherfucker deep. And, you know, it, it, it's like uh, Xanax is pretty much a goddamn mind eraser. Yes. Like, I didn't like that shit. My wife, she did. And so in 2017, I got into a car accident. Girl hit me head on going 60 miles an hour down 259 going towards Wardensville. Okay. I was about a mile and a half down the road. I had just taken this woman, Laura, to go fill her script because I was the one. I always considered myself a functioning drug addict because I always worked. I was a bartender, made good ass money, and always had pain pills. Right. I would pay for people to go to the doctor and then I would go pay and get their script out. And they'd be like, here, you want some Roxy's? I'm like, nah, I'll fuck with Roxy's. Roxy's don't do shit. I did 27 Roxy 30s one night. And didn't even work. What's the difference in your panel? What's a panel made of compared to? So it's oxymorphone. So it's got oxy, it's got morphine, and then it's got uh, oxymorphone. What's the last part? Uh, there's one more ingredient to it, but it was. It makes it different. It's, oh it's, it's separating it from. Oh my God. It's like legal heroin. Wow. And. So the company Opana actually went out of business years ago. They got sued and lost their ass. Well, you can still make the generic version, which is oxymorphone. Okay. So I, after that accident, I had my golden ticket. I had my MRI. Now I could go to the pill mill down in Frederick, Maryland and get my own scripts. Yeah. And I knew exactly what to say because I've been taking these motherfuckers for two years. Right. Once a week, every 28 days. I had one, so I would take this dude, Mike. Then the next week, I would take Skinner. Then the next week, I'd take Garland. And then finally, once I got thrown into the mix, then I would go. So I'm... Com- yeah, now you got five weeks and a month that you're yeah. getting scripts. And then fucking, I just kept meeting more people. Then I started doing it for this dude, Jamie. Then fucking Trish and Keith and... Yeah, man, I, I, we would do the same thing when we found a doctor that would accept them like that. And, mm-hmm. uh, I would take them all day long and be like, we'll go down here and pay for everything. Yep. You got, especially if they had insurance. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. If they had insurance, we were getting $800 worth of dope for, you know. Well, see, this bucks. place This place was in Maryland, so they wouldn't take insurance from us Virginia boys. Okay. So it was 250 just for the visit. Right. But it didn't matter how much, how much it was the pills worth. Well, on all right. So the first too. time I got my first script, they put you on your shirt short term, and they gave me uh fifty uh Percocet tens. Okay, and she was like, "Now when you come back next month, we're gonna give you your long term and your short term, and if we gotta adjust on the short, we'll do that when you come back." So I was like, "All right, cool." Well, it's funny. Every single person that works there that prescribes you this shit, they're all nurse practitioners, not one goddamn doctor. It says online, they go over their the MRI with you. Bullshit. They never even once. Never even looked at nah. it. Didn't even care though. Dude, it's a legal drug mill is what it is. Absolutely. And they, they know, and they know what they're doing. Back. Yes. And they know you're coming back. They know you're addicted. Yep. And the way I would do it, so that first visit, you got to piss clean. So I'd always have you pass. Right. Synthetic urine worked every time. Well, then after that, when I would go, 
I would get my script and I'd take it eh, a little more than I should have, but I would freeze my piss so that when I'd go down next time, I'd have that piss with that medication in it and I could just dump it in a cup. Right. Because they measured your levels and stuff to see how much they, was they, they said they could, but. Well, I had doctor, the last doctor that I had that was prescribing me uh, the Lauders and all that shit. Mm-hmm. She was giving me the Lauders, Klonopins, and methadone. Right. But I was taking Xannies. Yeah. And then they pissed me one time and caught me with gotcha. like Xannies. And she was like, your cutoff for these is 50 and you were at 450. <laughs> She's like, I can't, I can't keep prescribing you these pills. Right. And I was like, dude, you got to give me at least one more. Yeah. You give me at least one more script. Let me ride it out. One more yeah. script, doc. Come on. Please. Yeah, she gave me one more and that was 180 Delauded K4s. I shot them all in 40 hours. Shit, this place, man, they would put you on probation. So if you fucked up with dirty urine, that just let you now you're on probation with. and now you're paying 150 a week. No, I swear to God, 150 that- a week. Plus, you're only getting seven days worth. And you tell me them people don't know you're, <laughs> they know you're a dope addict. And man. you know the funny They're thing using is. using every part of you against yourself. Right. Well, and I knew everything to say that when I went in there, she was like, for the long term, right? She was like, well, would you uh, like to try da 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 I was like, I'm allergic, I'm allergic, I'm allergic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. And she's like, well, that's pretty much uh, just leaves us with uh, Opana's, which is my favorite. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, imagine that. No, yes, shit. yes. That's what I want. <laughs> So they started me out on five milligrams. I go back the next month. So they go fives, tens, and then they have 15s and they got 20s. Well, she starts me out on fives. They usually only bump you up five at a time, right? Well, the good RX had just became a thing. And I had a picture of what the tens would cost me because she knew I didn't have insurance. Right. Now, these are 12 hour pills. So she was like, look, so it's going to cost you like $400 for these 10s, but it's only going to cost you 200 for the 20s. I was like, yeah. And I had the picture. She's looking at them. She's like, all right, I'll go ahead and give you the 20s. No then. shit. Why not? <laughs> but so, judging that based off what you could spend and not what that pill was going to do, because you can't cut it in half. It ain't like you were nah, going to take half of that bitch. Hell there. no. So what you can only eat them or do was you breaking them down and shooting them? So all right, like so many people would fucking say, oh, you you can't fucking uh like you gotta take the coating off and da 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 bullshit. No, you don't. The coating's in the time release shit. Okay. I just crush it right there and snort it. Now, I had people that would sit there and lick it, get all the shit off, because the best ones were the forties. Mm-hmm. You do a 40 to the face, you are fucking gone. So and when did, did they start making them smart pills, though? So they had the ones with the plastic bullshit in it, but where we went, never never had to deal with that. Oh, shit. Because, see, I've never, I haven't fucked with them for so long, but I understand that they made the oxys, and I've actually seen oxys right. that are smart pills. You can't crush them. They're like fucking. Dude, it's a process. I saw this one girl, man. She had a motherfucking Dremel, Dremel in this bitch down. And then throwing baking soda in it and fucking putting it in the freezer, then baking it. And I'm like, God damn. She's putting some chemistry class in on that motherfucker. But she got that bullshit out. No way. I swear. And like, what is it? Was it oily or looking or? So it would turn to a powder after she would uh, freeze it, bake it. And then the powder would just water soluble. Yep. And then fucking another person told me, you just take it, put it in a shot glass, put a little bit of Coca-Cola in it. Wait like overnight and then it turns to like this goop and you just do that goop and it fucks you up. That's crazy. Yeah, like you just the extents we go through to get that shit into our bodies. And and it's so funny because you learn so many different things from so many different users and you know, you apply what works for you. And like so after my third visit with this place, right? I go up to her name was Alicia, my nurse practitioner. Cool as a fan. Loved her. Well, I was like, man, Alicia. And my wife came with me on this mm-hmm. visit. I was like, you know, the pills are great. I love them. Da, 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 da. But my dick ain't working. <laughs> right, facts. Facts. That joke will tap right out on you, bro. She fucking had this big ass smile on her face. My wife's sitting there like, oh, yeah. my God. Why'd you just put it like that? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't have a filter. Right, it is what fuck. it is. She prescribed me this shit. It was 40 pills. And it began with an S. 
And it was something I'd never even heard of. You had to take one 30 minutes before you fucking were going to fuck. And then one right as you're like going to it. Okay. So I used to go to the CVS over here uh, by you. Okay. And I had this dude, Will, that worked there. Will was cool as shit, man. Always fucking, as soon as he see me walk through the door, my fucking pills are ready to right go. Right there, ready to roll. Ready to roll. Well, I took him these dick pills. <laughs> and he was like, uh, dude, these are $637. No way. For 40 fucking pills. I was like, well, I got the good RX. See what that'll do. Dude, it took it down to $32. He was like, dude, I have never in my life seen the good RX do anything like that. Oh, shit. Like, that's $500 some dollars off. Right? Yeah. Wow. So. They're giving you a hell of a discount on them. Oh, like, absolutely. So now I'm getting. Wiener pills. Now I'm getting all these pills plus dick pills. Well, then I tell her on the next visit, I'm like, you know, I work like 18 hour days and, uh, you know, it kind of fades Adderall. out. That are all next. Nah, <laughs> she gave me another Opana on top of my two a day. Now I'm getting three a day. Well, okay. that's a, that's illegal as shit. They're twelve hour pills. All right. But she was like, since you ain't got insurance, I got you. I was like, all, all right, right like no documentation, I guess. Well, and then like shortly after that, she she left the place. Right? She told me she's like, I got to get out while I can. So I'm like, damn, y'all getting ready to get hit or something? What's, right? What's that mean? So, but that place has been there forever. It's still there. No oh, shit. Yeah. Chronic pain and spine. Frederick, Maryland. Uh, Yeah. I think that's probably one of the places my pop was going. Because I definitely heard of people cause talking about that Martinsburg and yep. the West Virginia area still has a lot of them pill mill type places. Well, and the funny thing is, is like only your mom and pop places feel for that place now. Mm -hmm. Like the first script I ever got, I took to Walmart. They told me to be ready in a half hour. And this is over on Route 50. When I go back to pick it up, the woman tells me no Walmart in the country will fill for this doctor's office. Okay. I was like, God damn. Yeah, yeah. Once so, they get that name on them. There was doctors like that on my case when we went to the feds mm -hmm. uh, where he was meeting them in the parking lot. I watched a documentary. 250 a script. Like yep. 250 a script. Yep. He was right now, whatever. You know, take him a thousand dollars. You have four scripts. And back then was before shit was connected the way it is yep. in the computers. So you go to one end of the strip, yeah, drop yeah, off four scripts, fucking, circle back around. That's before the on. red flag. Yeah. 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 And fuck it, there was a doctor in uh fucking one of these little West Virginia towns, uh Romney or one of those. They had a documentary on uh Pluto that was actually really good. And fucking he was doing the same shit. I mean, it's kind of hard not to, right? Like, I mean, think about being able to just write down on a piece of paper right. uh, uh, something that's going to keep people coming back to you, paying you money on a monthly or weekly basis. Right. Like, I but mean, you have to. How many lives you're destroying and they don't get shit when they get in trouble? No, well, we talked about the Sacklers on one of these yeah, recently. Yeah, oh my Dude, I mean, God. that's just so disgusting that them people do Big what they fucking did. pharma, man. They it got is. their hands in everything, too. Like clothing, designer clothing companies. Anything that you buy, Big Pharma has a hand in. And I think one of the most interesting things about it all is the way that like, I seen the producer of the film on Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how, uh, you know, the dude that makes the, uh, what's the Nobel Peace Prize? You know uh, that yeah, man was? Yeah, so um, that man created uh, gunpowder. Yeah. And then he supposedly seen his own obituary because they thought he was dead. Mm -hmm. So when he sees his own obituary, they called him the merchant of death because he created gunpowder. Right. So then when he seen that, he took all of his money from there and invested it in the Nobel Peace Prize because now that's his legacy. Right, right. His legacy is not destruction. It's the Nobel Peace Prize. Damn, that, that I didn't know that. That's and pretty cool. And the Sacklers are a similar thing because they have their name on all these fucking buildings and all mm -hmm. these educational systems in this, you know, Sackler wing of this. And it's disgusting because look what they're doing. Well, and it dates all the way back to like when medication first started becoming a thing in like medical textbooks. They weren't allowed to put anything herbal or plant-based because you can't patent a plant. Right. And that was the Roethlisschilds and all them. Well, then once they found out this bullshit medicine that they're giving people is causing cancer, mm -hmm. what do they do? They create the Cancer Foundation. Yeah. So to come back around or it's like, uh, no regard for human addicted, life, but then we're going to fund this place. That's going to help addicts. Yeah. And, but if I get in trouble, pff, I don't get in trouble. No. I get a slap on the wrist. Yeah. 
you take a little chump change and yeah, man. on your way. So from there, like uh, prison time, jail time, when did you start going in? When was so, the first time you went inside? Did you do any time like juvenile? No juvenile time. Uh, but my, all right. So I got my first DUI in 2004. And it was when my Red Sox came back on the Yankees. We were down three games to none and came back and did what nobody's ever done in the history of baseball. Won four straight to go to the World Series. Won our first World Series in like 86 years. Okay. My grandfather lived his whole life and died in September of that year. And that the Red Sox won it in October. Hmm. And he, he was like who got me into sports and shit. So that was a very touching thing. And I ended up getting a DUI. And then three years later, I got my second one in 2007 when the Red Sox won their second World Series in three years. And then 2009, uh, over Apple Blossom, the mother of my child, uh, some dude tried to beat the shit out of her. And fucking, I just went out and got tanked. So I got three DUIs within, granted, the lawyer, Roger Inger, got them three within 10 because if it would have been three within five, I would have done a straight year in jail right off the bat. Okay. And loss of license for a year right, and right. all that. Had he was cool. a beast though. That oh, dude. He was an absolute monster. You'd go in there, smoke cigarettes with him and he'd be like, oh, we got this shit. You put your feet up on, he put his feet up on the yep. desk. Yep. Dude, he, he just was go right man. to the front. He didn't wait for, he didn't wait for nobody calling nope. him names. I'm first, bitch. Yeah, exactly. And like when he walked in that courtroom, it smelled like fucking nicotine. And fucking whatever the yeah. hell he was drinking the night before. Yeah, man. Roger Inger was a monster lawyer. He was a yeah. lawyer, man. I had Roger more than once just him. for y'all Loved listening. Him. He was and you never had to beast. pay him off. No, he was a monster. Shit, yeah. I probably still I owe money he, to this bro, day. I, I owe him at least 20K. <laughs> I owe him at least 20K. There's no doubt in yeah. my mind. I would miss Core completely, get home, and he would cook us back then. Again, we didn't have cell phones. Nope. Like they called you. He would call me at home and be like, you know you had court today? <laughs> nope. I say, no. What happened? He said, don't sweat it. I got to throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> we like, damn, Roger. That's fucking great. Man, love that dude. So went to jail what age? So my third one was in 2010, and I got six. Well, I got a year, but I ended up having this lawyer, uh, Beth Kellis. Or no, not Beth Kellis. I had her back in like 2001 for my first offender thing. I've been a first offender twice in the state of Virginia. Hmm, how's that work? So I got a <laughs> uh, marijuana charge. And I went through with the ASAP bullshit. By your fifth class, you had to have two AA papers. Well, I had an absent from my fourth class because two of my friends passed away over Apple Blossom. And I'm 18, 19 at this point. So when I go back in and he tells everybody to pass up their two slips, I go up to him. I'm like, hey, man, I got one with me, but this is only my fourth class because I wasn't here last week. I got one with me. I got the other one at the house. I know you got a class after this. May I bring it back? For that next class. Right. He's like, nah, get out. You're kicked out. I'm like, hold up, hold up. You said by our fifth class, this is my fourth. He's like, get out. So I go back home, tell my mom and dad what happened. My mom flies down there. She got the papers in her hand. And he's like, ma'am, if you do not leave, I will call the law on you. And she was like, you're supposed to be helping these people. Ain't it? You're just fucking them. Just a scumbag. Yeah. No reason for people like that to be in those positions. It's all about money. Yeah. They don't give a shit. No regard for human life or, but it, it's so funny how the state wants to act like they care about drug addicts. Oh, well, you're a danger to yourself. D did I rob anybody? Did I do anything stupid? No, I just got high. Yeah, you fucking care. You'll yeah. give a goddamn fucking child molester fucking bond or fucking a slap on a wrist. I just did damn near. I did 22 months and two days for distribution of Suboxone. Was told that I was a danger to the community when you got probably 20 some fucking Suboxone clinics here in this mm -hmm, town. Mm -hmm. And yet I did uh, almost more time than a lot of the child molesters in there. Um, probably all of them. And, and the sad thing is is I found out the government does not like competition and it, it, it just makes you sick because I, I was in there with a guy who got like three years for violently 
and a 14-year-old. He was already a violent sex offender that would not register. Mm. Should have got like 30 some, 37 years. Fucking piece of shit Judge Madden gives him fucking three years time served. Disgusting, isn't it? And when I was in there. It's like, how can they not, how can you as a judge not look at them? I don't know, man. Because he's probably the same way, bro. <laughs> yeah, You know what? That's a good fucking point. Man. You know what's really funny? People uh, think that like Chester Bennington, Chris Cornell, and Anthony Bourdain all committed suicide. No, yeah. they didn't. You know okay. what they were doing? Getting ready to write a book. Well, Chester and Chris Cornell were best friends. They were also working on sex trafficking documentaries mm -hmm. at the time of their death. I heard that before, too. Mm -hmm. I've heard that before, too. And it just happened to be perfect that uh, that that Chester. What, no, what was it? Yeah. Chester hung himself on Chris's birthday. Right. Or right yeah. A year after that his makes death. It look like, oh, yeah. But he uh, was with his family like right before that, like doing well, having fun. Da, 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 and then, oh, well, there there was some MDMA in his system. I'm sorry, MDMA ain't gonna make you no, want to kill yourself. Never. They're gonna make you want to either fuck or fucking have people touch you. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Please rub my hair. Oh, it feels so good. Yeah, that's crazy, though, man. For sure, and it's crazy that the drugs are getting more for it. Uh, well, shit, they just made especially fentanyl. when you're just using. You're just using. Yeah, and they, now I can get being all over the fentanyl, man. That's what I've been telling one of my boys lately. It's a terrorist act that, now. It's like he is. Uh, he's if you don't. Walk the fucking line of probation. They're going to put him back in. He's oh, going to do two and a half, three well, because years, you're a danger to them now. You know what I'm saying? And and he's a high risk for reusage. So yep. I'm like, bro, you got to just stay away from all of that shit. Like, you can't play around and just hope that they don't hit you up. Because right. It's instantaneous messaging telling you to be here in the next 24 hours. You're fucked. But you know, the fucked up thing is, right? So honestly, this 22 months and two days that I did, it's, it got me over that hump I couldn't get over on my own. Right. So I, I, you know, I've done suboxone, I've done methadone, fucking you name it to try to get off opiates. Could never do it. Well, I went there for 22 months, two days. I did suboxone probably about 20 sometimes while I was in there. Okay. And a full strip went for $400. See, I knew it was expensive. So how much drugs was in there? Was it like, because Eric there, was telling there, me that there was all kinds oh, of dope yeah, where he was at. Yeah, there was ice. There was fucking, uh, Suboxone was the big one though, because that's the easiest to get in. Um, And that's all I ever fucked with. The shit, they, people had LSD in there. And at the same time too, you're taking one eight milligram strip and making how many doses, how many pieces? Shit, you get a 64th, which is like a little smidgen. Right, so 64 pieces out of one strip. Yeah, and it, it it's like and literally like a little piece, piece for what? Uh, that would cost you about 50, 60 bucks. God, it's crazy. But it, you'd be high as a motherfucker. High as shit. Fucking sweating bullets. I'm cleaning my goddamn cell, fucking like sweating bullets and like. Yeah. But then. Uh, Last time I went in, it was the same thing. A couple of them boys had some. And I remember looking over at the kid and they was just like, I was like, he's in there cleaning everything. <laughs> he's high as shit, man. Man, every time I'm locked up, I'm locked up with my homeboy, Mickey. And he's actually, he just hit me up yesterday, man. He fucking was on H-E-M. He fucked up. Now he's down the road. Oh, so but every time I'm locked up, I'm locked up with my boy Mickey. And as soon as he walks in that pot, he got that smile on his face. I already know what time it is. Yeah, yeah, he's got on. the subs. It's he's on. got the subs. I'm like, what's up? It's on. He's like, you know, I got you. I'm like, all right, cool. That's how my boy Eric is too, man. He can't go in there without, uh, yep. yeah, he's going to be into that shit. So fucking 22 months, two days, and I never went big with what I would get with Suboxone because I'm not paying 400 a strip. That's just fucking right. retarded. But uh, so anyway, when I get out, right, they pitch this, me going to this place called Brightview, which is a fucking Suboxone clinic. And so I was like, all right, you know, I'll go, but I, I, I don't want to. Suboxone, so I, I don't want none of that shit. Right. Well, they tell me, they're like, well, Mr. Reagans, you know, we don't want you to relapse. And if you were to relapse, we'd rather you have this as opposed to the alternative. And who's paying for that? Oh, state. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. S it's just like a circle of fucking money and addiction, though, because I know that, that that's, they pay for these methadone clinics yeah, and Suboxone clinics around long. here, man. Well, so they gave me one strip, right? And I had to go back the next day. I go back the next day. They're like, how'd the medication do you? I was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, I, I ain't even taking it. 
I, I didn't feel like I was going to relapse. Right. Well, Mr. Reagans, this isn't how this program works. I was like, hold up. I'm going to stop you right there. I know how this fucking program works. Me being here pays your fucking mortgage. Right. And this shit's just as addictive as the other bullshit. And like, you know, da, da, da. so I went for three weeks and they wanted me to do two a day. I ain't doing no two a day. I want one. So I get seven. I did two itty bitty little pieces in those three weeks. And it was when I would have to take the drug test that when I'd go in to get my fucking next script. And it all it did was make me itchy. Fucking I couldn't sleep. I'm fucking sweating. I'm puking. But but it didn't do that to me when I was locked up. Weird, right? But you also get a separation from it. Once you get a certain separation, now that nausea and shit. That's, oh, dude, I hated it. It's me too. I can't even stand the smell of some. Fuck no. I can barely oh, stand dude, the smell bleh. of a fucking one of them orange, <laughs> with some orange pops that they taste like. Oh my like. God, I can, fucking yeah, disgusting. I can't stand the smell of them. I can't stand the taste of them. I want no parts of them. Shit, that, I, they had mint ones though. The mint ones weren't bad. Mint ones. Yeah. No shit, they change the flavor of. They've had that for a while. See, Not many places will get it, though. I haven't fucked around with Suboxone for years. Now, the pills, the pills didn't really bother me because I could just fucking crush it up and snort it, or I could fucking uh, smoke it. Oh, I've never seen anybody smoke it. Yeah, it fuck you up, too. Smoke Suboxone. Huh? Yeah. Oh, crazy. And then also, then they got Subutex, which yeah. is what- Virginia will only so give Subutex it to pregnant. is the same thing without the blocker, though, right? Correct. Now, Virginia, for the longest time, would only give it to pregnant females. Well, now they're giving it to everybody because all you got to do is say, well, I'm allergic to that blocker. Right. Because you got buprenorphine yeah. and then naloxone. Right. Those are the two things for- Yeah, yeah for, for sub you, you, suboxone. Yeah, you say you're allergic to that blocker. But guess what? Now they're giving motherfucking suboxone. To crystal meth addicts. Weird. How in the fuck does that work? I don't know, though. I had a chick on the other day that said uh, when she was coming off of opiates, that meth was what stopped her from DT. And, and I've had a lot of people tell me that. Yeah. They were like, you know, that's how I got over my addiction. Well, what got me over mine was the 22 months and two days. And as soon as I got out, I talked to this dude, Brian Cave. Right before I got locked up, his brother Rodney, who me and Rodney were fucking, this dude was fucking batshit fucking crazy. I loved him. When Rodney was high, he'd be like, to the moon. Right. And then fucking, he had a pan of 30s. And, oh, my God. That was great. <laughs> he dies, like, literally two days before I go in. I get out. And during that 22 months and two days, I was in there with his brother, Brian. Brian's a little bit younger. And uh, when I finally got out, Brian, he is a pure recovery specialist down at uh, Eagle Rock or something like that, down like Chesapeake area, Virginia Beach, whatever. Okay. He's like, man, you need to come down here. You know, you go through the program, then I can get you on, be a pure recovery specialist like me, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, you know, I, I, I was considering right, you it. you think you're interested in something like that? So, I would... But for me to hit sit here and tell you I'm never going to do drugs again is a complete lie. Okay. I still do mushrooms because okay. mushrooms you can't test for. All you're doing is food poisoning yourself. Okay. And we only use like under 10% of our brain. Well, with mushrooms, you use way more. And if you can control your mind and not freak the fuck out, I've been taking mushrooms sometimes three, four times a week. All right. Not microdosing though. You're tripping full Man, on. Man, every time I try to microdose, I fucking trip. <laughs> it don't work. I guess it depends on what you get, man. <laughs> well, and I got a buddy that grows like fucking seven different kinds. Oh, yeah. Well, then you got access that makes it different. And I just recently found out there's like two different types of like mushrooms. The ones that I'm used to and that everybody's used to, they're called cubes. And then the newer ones, granted, they've been out for over 20 years, but they just now have been gaining popularity. They're called gnats. And two grams of those gnats, mushrooms, is equivalent to the strongest shit, six grams, that I'm used to. Okay. I haven't found them yet, but I want to. Oh, shit. Because if you can make it through a mushroom trip 
And like, I've never had a bad trip on mushrooms. I've never wigged out. I've never nothing. And I've taken 11.33 grams, which people are like, dude, are you fucking crazy? I'm like, no, I, I just like to see what my mind can do. Granted, the first hour and like 20 minutes, I couldn't fucking move. Couldn't function at all. Had a goddamn outer outer body experience, but there's five different levels. I've only been to that fifth level maybe three, four times, and it's fucking like amazing to me. Most people are like, oh, I don't ever want to do that again. I'm like, fucking sign me up. Right. But I used to have a bunch of them when I was a kid. We ate acid two or three times a week. <laughs> Dramamine. <laughs> yeah, fuck me up, man. But now LSD, I'll never do again. Okay. See, I'm not interested in that either. I tried, I tried one of them polka much. dot bars. You ever seen the polka yeah. dot? Now that's synthetic. It says it's synthetic on there. Right, right. But it's a similar buzz. It's just a really good, it's a good feeling without that loss of fucking, right, right. you know, your brain. Well, and see like LSD obviously is chemically, chemically made. Mushrooms is all natural. Right on. You can go, like, what I really, really, really want to do is go to Central America and do the ayahuasca. Uh, they have, like, packets to where you go down there. Ayahuasca is a root which you get DMT from, which DMT, Joe Rogan's huge, mm-hmm. loves the shit. Uh, a DMT trip is, like, 15 minutes, but it's the most fucking intense. It's, like, supposedly what your body goes through right before death. DNT is what your body excretes during yeah, yeah, death. Yeah, right? yeah, there you right. go. There you go. So, ayahuasca is the root that causes that to work. And they, like, these people got to, like, cook this shit for, like, hours and hours and hours, like, over eight hours. And you can do, like, a fucking, like, week of this shit. And it's like, you do, or maybe five days, and it's like 2,200 bucks. You go down there, you're like, like pretty much on a reservation and they have these people that take care of you. And when they give you the ayahuasca drink, it lasts for like four hours and it is supposedly the most intense, like your vision becomes the predator. Right. Like, Cause I've watched documentaries and shit on people explaining it. And I'm like, hell yeah. Crazy scene. I'd, I'd be the one that'd be like, uh, can I come back tomorrow? Right. Like I mean, it, it's crazy enough. I've seen shit melt and stuff like that. I've seen shadows breathing. around everything and yeah, the moving and the constant. I love it. I'm just not in, I'm not in the headspace for that shit anymore. I don't think. So with me, with mushrooms, I call it color land because it just makes everything so vibrant. Like that picture right there would be amazing because mm-hmm. it, it would just be so bright and vibrant. LED lights are a fucking blessing. When I was at the Blue Ridge Rock Festival, holy shit. Worst fucking festival. I, yeah. But anyway, the girl I went with was a nurse, and God bless her heart, doesn't know how to set up a 10 person tent to save her fucking life. It's a million degrees. I'm trying to do this shit by myself and just get frustrated because she ain't doing a damn thing. So our neighbors were from like New Zealand, and they were cool as shit. It was dad and son. And someone, he was probably about 24, mid, early 20s. And he, so he helped me. Well, I was so hot and frustrated. I fucking took a fucking big old thing of fucking mushrooms, threw it in my yogurt, mixed it up real quick, and just ate the shit out of it real quick. So we had to walk from our tent to, like, the entrance. When you first walked in, there's a stage here. And you went past that stage, and then they had dual stages. So when the one band would be done, the other bands are start out. right up and got fucking set amazing. That shit up. So as soon as we get down there, it's Thursday, like almost five o'clock or something like that, and highly suspect is just okay. coming on. And I had just seen them in February at a sold out show at Ramshead. I already knew they were going to be great. My favorite song by them, the Mushrooms fucking rocked me and i'd never tripped on mushrooms at like like with people of that magnitude like it had always just been like a couple friends or something right so i didn't know how i I was gonna be well i had this shit happen that i've never had on mushrooms before it took my vision and like distorted it like when the bass would hit in and i was just like it just made me feel like the whole show threw me 
And then as soon as they got done, a goddamn hurricane comes through, like out of nowhere. Like it's like a million degrees. And then the next thing you know, it's fucking freezing cold, rain stinging you. <laughs> and then you're just like, I'm tripping balls. So I'm like, is this even real? Dude, so that mile, it took us like mile and a half to get to the fucking shit to get back to the tent. Oh, my God. You would have thought it took like five hours. And it was so funny because like when the first round of the storm went through, we had got to like the halfway point and we run into my friend Jody and her husband, James. And we're sitting there talking and I'm like trying to end a conversation because I was like, well, I got squishy feet. I can't stand squishy feet. I hate it when my feet are wet and I got socks on gotta and go. shoes. I got to go. I did this for like 20 fucking minutes. So as soon as we split, the goddamn storm hits again. And me and fucking Chelsea are running. And like, you can't even see at this point. Like the wind's so strong. We're like hiding behind RVs and cars and shit. So we get behind this one like minivan and this little black dude out of nowhere plops down right beside us. And he's like, man, you know what's worse than two trailer park chicks? Da, 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 tell some random ass joke. I'm like, dude, you're <laughs> fucking great. I love you. And then he was gone. Never saw him again. Never seen him again. I was like, that, that guy was cool. I liked him. I had an experience like that one time we was tripping balls on the back of a truck and dude yeah. came over, hung his wiener out, started peeing in somebody's <laughs> gas tank in the side of a van. Nice. We're watching him. I'm like, bro, what are you doing right now? And he's like, oh, these people are assholes, man. <laughs> he fucking closed the back up, came nice. over, started smoking a cigarette and that, talking to that, us, That man. is so great, too, because like just random stupid shit like that, like one of the dumbest people I could have ever met told me one of the funniest jokes and I, I was just like, wow, I, I never would have. Right. He was like, you know what's worse than going to the abortion clinic? And I was like, oh God. And I was like, I don't know what. <laughs> he was like, having to go back in and ask for a hanger because you locked your keys in the car. Oh, man. <laughs> I was like, God damn. <laughs> I did not expect you to yeah, have that, that in brutal, you. Right? That was that's great. That's brutal shit. But anyway, so uh, I've thought like, you know, running through this goddamn hurricane storm that I fucking would have like, you know, it would have made my trip go away. No, it intensified it to like, if you would have asked me my name, I would have been like blue. Right. I couldn't form sentences. I mean, blood's probably pumping twice as hard too, pushing that shit <sighs> through you twice as hard, maybe. And you figure the shrooms took effect at about 530. In the after evening, it didn't go away till like three something in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, and I could tell everybody knew I was fucking gone yeah, because yeah. I, I couldn't even think of what words were coming out of my mouth if it was even the right response. <laughs> yeah, you get to that point, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> so you feel like shit like that's like totally separated from the opiates, though? You can separate oh, that shit. In absolutely. Absolutely. Because with opiates, it's such a Fucking, oh my God, like the whole lifestyle with opiates becomes the addiction. Like always running to go get shit. You know when you're going to get sick. Like I would sneeze three times in a row. And that's how I knew my fucking withdrawals were getting ready to start. Right, and I need to get something fucking now. And it got to the point where I was so bad on opiates. I got my CDL class A license. Did behind the wheel in a big ass tractor trailer with a 53 foot long fucking shit attached to it. Mm -hmm. I did six Opana 20s and that was just maintenance before I got behind the wheel on that. That's that's bad, ain't it? When you get to that point, man, like you feel so bad without any of that in your system that running out exactly. of it's terrifying. And, and like, I, I would rather fucking have a bullet and a gun than to ever go through the withdrawals off methadone. Yes, that me too. It comes out of your bones. Dude. It comes out of your bones, bro. 30 it's in your bone, straight bro. days. Dude, I felt it for six months. I was <sighs> on for five years and I felt it for six months. Was I sick for six months? No. No, but, but that you first 30 you. days, I was bad. Well, stretching and everything oh, always dude. hurt, man. And it just, was something new every day. Yeah, it's always, it's just horrible. And so 
I met an amazing doctor. Like I ended up going to the psych ward and while I was in there, they were still giving me my pain pills that I was prescribed. But now granted they didn't have Opana's or the oxymorphone. They switched me to Oxycontin. Well, I would get those every 10 to 12 hours. Well, they would only last about maybe two to four hours before I'd start withdrawing. Then they would give me uh, two Roxy 20s, which that would fucking make me withdraw in like 30 minutes after giving me those. So after like the first two days in the psych ward, I was like, can we please just go ahead and start the methadone? Right. They were like, what? Because it was so much like back and forth with the withdrawals, huh? Yeah. Like I was just like, well, couple yeah, hours. I, know, I know that's what you all are put, like, we've already talked about it. That's what y'all going to put me on. So right. let's, let's do it now. Yeah. Well, Dr. Andrew Myers, I'll never forget his name. He was like, just remember with methadone, less is more. And I was like, all right. So they gave me, generally they'll start you out at a fucking, uh, fucking methadone clinic at 35 milligrams. At least 30 or 40, yeah. He wanted to start me out at 15. I was like, well, can I do five right now? And then see how long it lasts me and then do another five after that. He was like, yeah, we'll do that. He was like, nobody's ever asked that. Right. He was like, nobody's even asked to be taken off their goddamn pills. We have to cut them off. And I was like, well, I mean, if this is the process that we're doing, let's do it. I don't, I don't want to withdraw anymore. Right. Sick of this feeling. Oh, my man. God. So fucking the five milligrams, the pill that they gave me, it lasted 23 hours. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. I used to get them shit. little thighs. I love them. Oh, put that I shit up them. your nose oh. like a hornet's nest. Yeah, see, no, <laughs> no, I never snorted them because oh they, they had to be vicious when it come to that. But I just liked them because they lasted so Ever. long. Forever. They lasted so long. I could take one and just, I'm fucking good for days. Yeah. At a time, you just eat one and you're just like, you was normal. But they made me so lethargic. They made me gain weight. Right. And they made me lazy. Well, because- during that time, all I ate was like gummy bears, vanilla ice cream, like just shit, like shit that right. you shouldn't eat. Crap food. Like just shitty ass food. And like, so you can always tell when somebody is first getting healthy and shit like that because, you know, they put the weight on, yada, yada, yada. Well, so when I went to the methadone clinic after I got out of psych ward, the first thing they wanted to do was put me on 35 milligrams. And I was like, no, I only want 15 because that's what I built myself up to. They were like, sir, we don't do that. I was like, well, here's my doctor note from Dr. Andrew Myers, who just released me from the fucking psych ward and wants me to take 15 milligrams. Right. Why are y'all trying to give me so much more? I think that's what their offices in the back are doing. Right. I think they're having a meeting there in the morning and they're like, all right, guys, you know, sales are down on methadone. We're going to up the everybody's yep. shit today by five milligrams. And you know, the funny thing is I went in there, I think, so I got out on Valentine's Day and I went to fucking uh, the clinic the next day, right? They weren't going to see me because they only do intake on Tuesdays. I was like, oh, so what you're telling me is I got to go six days. Right. So I'm just going to go get some smack. And when I die, it's on you. They took me and my wife right then and there. Right. Like, come on, man. I mean. What do you mean? You're supposed to be helping people yeah, out here. What, you have one day that you fucking can register for this it's shit? It's just like anything else that once you monetize that shit, bro, it becomes a different reason to do it. Well, and when we were going through this bullshit, right? Fucking, It was like uh, during the winter and it was like nothing but ice storms. So supposedly you got to go to like counseling shit and all this and mm -hmm. that there. Well, I was walking out after I took a dose and I was smoking a lot of crack at this point in time too, getting off the opiates because I didn't fuck with crystal meth, but crack worked. Okay. Well, so I ran into, I guess, whoever the fuck my counselor was. She was like, you're Mr. Wesley Reagan's, right? And I was like, yeah. She's like, well, hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm your counselor, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, you're going to do some meetings and this and that. And I was like... No, nah, I'm pretty much just going to stop coming one day. And she was like, well, no, Mr. Reagans, that's not how we do things around here. Your body is healing and blah, 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 blah. Healing, but yet you keep bumping me up five milligrams, 10 milligrams every couple of days. No, you're just pumping me full of that shit 
that Dr. Andrew Myers told me less is more. Right. So in the 22 days that I went, I went from 15 milligrams. My last dosage was 35. And I wasn't on it, but 22 days, it took me 30 of straight hell Just to get it out. withdrawals. Sickening. It's, it's, and it's a different withdrawal, too. Oh, dude, it's gross. It's not as hard hitting, but it's longer lasting. Ugh. And it's, it's so different. Couldn't sleep, dude. That, mo- sleep. that month felt like an eternity. And I probably would have never got off if it wasn't for jail, too. Uh, she was giving me 60 a day, mm-hmm. and I would do 30. Right, right. I was doing 30 because I would take and, and, and do so many of them at first that I'd get real high, and then I'd just save enough to have 30 a day. Right, right. But when I fucking finally got the last prescription, I got down to where I was taking one 5-milligram pill, no, one 10-milligram pill. Okay. And breaking it into four pieces. Right, right. And I was only taking two and a half milligrams at a time. But it's still lasting you. And it still took, yes. So, I, and I'm, I had my gallbladder, so I, my gallbladder ruptured whatever the hell it was, and they had to have the ambulance come. Oof. And you know, when the ambulance came- they're like, do you do anything in drugs? I was like, look, man, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've been an intravenous drug user in my yeah, life, yeah. but I'm only on two and a half milligrams of methadone, man. I've gotten to that point. I'm doing good. Hell yeah. That's, a, that's an amazing yeah, accomplishment. And, and, they, and they didn't want to, you know what I mean? They still just judged me and looked at me all crazy. And it took them like four hours to give me any kind of pain meds Jesus when I got Christ. to the hospital. You know what I mean? And I was like, bro, look, man, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm being take, straight up with right, you. And you're still not helping me. I could have nope. lied to you and probably yeah. had something else And happen. you probably would have gave it to me yeah. then. Yeah, man. And that doctor was a fucking dick. Oh, man. they are too, man. Like, and you know, all right. So like when I got out and I talked to my boy, Brian, he's trying to get me to go to the Eagle Nest place. He told me that uh, recently, you know, he had had a hiccup withdrawal or uh, relapse. And after I got off the phone with him that night, he died the next day. Mm. He had a withdrawal. Or uh, relapse, got a uh, fentanyl pill, and it killed him. And I was like, going on, man? And I was like, that's going to be me if I ever let my guard down with that shit. Yes. Like, it ain't worth it. I choose choose life now. And you don't even know, like, my thing about prescription pills is I always knew what it was going to do. Right. If it was an Oxy 20, 40, 80, 160, oh, yeah, a hydrocodone, yeah. a Percocet, a Xanax, a Valium, I knew what that pill was going to do. But back in those days also, you didn't have to worry about this fucking synthetic bullshit drug cartel fucking. And it's a pressed fentanyl pill that looks exactly like whatever you're exactly. really searching for. And now, that's where the problem really comes in is because even if you're trying to be careful, and you are buying prescription pills, Mm -hmm. you have to make sure that it's coming from a pharmacy. Exactly. Like, legit, I know you, you bought it from a pharmacy, and if if that's the way it can't go, then I don't want to do it, not that I want to do it anyways, but the legitimacy of knowing it's real shit is the scariest thing of all. I had a homegirl here recently. Guy gave her four Aleve pills. They were fucking press pills. Why would like you a leave? Why would they do that though? It just feels weird to me for drug dealers to want to kill their clients. Well, and, and, and you know, I get it that it's that addictive and shit like that. But okay, so the thing that sucks when you buy drugs off the street, there's no fucking ingredients. Like, so you never know what you're truly getting unless you're fucking like testing the shit and da da da. But who's got time for that? And so on and so forth. You know, when you want to get high, you want to get high. And it's bullshit that, like, if you get caught or anything like that, that you're getting all these bullshit charges now because fentanyl is its separate thing. This is its separate thing. Right. Well, I didn't want any goddamn fentanyl in there. Right. I wanted fucking pure heroin. Right. Okay. That makes sense. But now I got fucking even more fucking shit thrown at me because, and now they just made it a terrorist act. To what? For fentanyl. To sell it. Yep. I mean, I feel like that's probably not a bad thing, man. Homegirl, uh, I was, all right, so on March 15th, I got a year for a fucking, uh, March 15th, 2022, I got uh, took a deal for my third violation. I took a year on it. Well, I was already almost done anyway. I got out August that year of 2022 when I met you. Okay. Yeah, when we first went to yeah. Five Figure Death Punch. So this girl, Brittany Barr, is the first person in the history of Winchester, Virginia. She sold dude shit that had fentanyl in it, Uh did it with him. 
He overdosed. She takes his phone and dips the fuck out. They just charged her with murder. Now, yeah. people were bashing her, this and that, and da da da. I'm like, nah, fuck that. When you're an opiate addict, you know what you signed up for. She didn't fucking hold him down and fucking put that spike in him. She didn't tie him to a chair. Right. You make that choice. And somebody was like, well, what if that was your daughter? I was like, she she chose it. And at the same time, I think they recently changed the law so that in that situation. Good Samaritan, yeah. Right. So in that situation, she should have called the police but and they would have not been able to charge her. Here's right? the thing, though. Brittany Barr has been in trouble since like 2012. She was probably on probation. So she would have violated, would have gone back to jail. Obviously, she's a heroin addict, opiate user. So withdrawals going through her mind. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. So there's so many different angles you can look at it from. That's why I, I'm like, you know, if you're going to do anything, manslaughter, you know, not murder. Right. It'll probably get dropped to that anyways. Nah. Yo, she got. You go to trial, you don't think? She already got sentenced, right? Oh, no, shit. She was facing 80 years. She got like 22 years suspended and has to serve 18 years. Damn. Fucking insane, dude. Uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. Like some of them things, it's, and it's so extremely different from one person to the next is what makes it the most fucked up of all. Yeah, and now they're putting the shit in meth, which is a upper. Like now you're making people speedball and shit. Right, right. Like just because well, how about these it's so addictive. And in, in, in you know the northern states where they're shooting that meat tenderizer and shit like that. And what? Oh, I saw some shit on that. Yeah, off man. And you see their bones. Yeah, and shit, bro, that shit's terrible. Well, and then they Trank got that uh, crocodile or whatever. I had a friend that died here from that shit, where it eats your fucking. I do remember seeing a, a couple of posts about that Ugh. shit a couple years back. It's got like gasoline and fucking like. And what's it supposed to make you feel like? It's supposed to be like opiates. Right. But it fucking like eats your fucking body from, from the, inside, the inside, out. inside out. So that's what this trank is too. It's a tranquilizer, some horse tranquilizer mm-hmm. mixed with fentanyl. And then they shoot it and that, like there's a meat tenderizer or something, whatever, makes the meat and salty. Maggots and all that works shit in you. <laughs> Bro, I've seen some of them videos and these cats are showing their bone. Yeah. Like, and then they, they can't get help because they won't let them into these facilities with them open wounds. Right, right. So they're just kind of fucked and they, they're they still shooting. Like, dude, I've seen this one. And I swear, bro, his whole hand is not even usable. It's all looks like uh, some Freddy Krueger movie. Yeah. And he's still just. It's, it's my strong hand. Yeah, man. He's still just <laughs> whacking, the, you know, throwing some more stuff in there, man. I don't know. That's I, that's tough for me to think about my body falling apart like that and me not stopping. I knew uh, people in the fucking goddamn hospital fucking pretty much dying and having their people come in and fucking putting heroin in their fucking and IV. still doing it. Yep. And still doing it. it, it is that? I have never in my life had any drug control my life like that. Yeah. From the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. During your sleep, it's controlling oh, your dreams. Oh, God, man. It, it, it's so fucking terrible but once if you actually break those chains and get away from it I couldn't be happier I feel like you have to find a disgust with it you have to look at it and you cannot see the fun that you had you cannot see that you have to see the end game you have to play the tape all the way in this yep. first one's gonna get me to this point and that's what you have to see well and the first thing I did when I got out on August uh, 10th of 2022 is I cleared my phone all yes. my contacts Tell my people that all the time. These guys that keep relapsing and shit, they call you me. You cannot and I'm like, put you, yourself back in that yeah, situation. You can't be around them people and they can't contact you. And if they're not, like, I had a chick hit me up a while back. And she's like, hey, I got, you know, delauded. And my immediate text to her was the devil, I tell you. Mm-hmm. Do not, you know, I Why appreciate open that you. Gate? I appreciate you not calling me anymore and offering me that for you. You know, it ruins my fucking life. Yep. And if I do call you tomorrow. And I tell you, I want some for someone else or me. Tell me they're gone. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth right yeah. now. And anything I say other than this right now is a fucking lie. Yeah, exactly. Don't help me destroy my life. Well, and you know, it's so funny. So one of my good buddies I was locked up with, right? I got out in August. He got out like right before Christmas. Within seven days, he's already addicted to opiates and fucking heroin, going to Baltimore, shit like that. He hits me up. He's like, I could tell he was sick. And he was like, if you love me, I was like, Nate, I'm going to stop you right there, dog. I do love you, but I can't be around you. Right. I cannot be around active users 
because I'm just going to go right back to that fucking what gonna, you're at right now. Yeah, he's going to get you high before you get him clean. I will give you advice. I will talk to you, but I will not pick you up. I will not give you money. I will not. You have to draw a line for your own sanity too, man. Which yeah. you, maybe one day you'll be in a different place where you can pull him around and, and you know, uh, yeah. But sometimes you're just not in that place, man. And you know that being around something that negative is eventually going to seep its way into your life. Well, and not only that, but like, you know, when people lose their battle to addiction, I'm like, at least they're not suffering anymore, you know? Like... Cause that's such an evil fucking way to live. And granted, like with me, it never got to the point where like I would steal and shit like that. I always had ways to make money, but everybody's different. Yeah. Like, you know, you got one dude going out robbing people and shit to support his habit. Then you got this one that's fucking making six figures a year. Fucking, but he's still getting high. I think that's one of the craziest things too is, uh, it doesn't really give a shit what color, creed, or oh, how no. much money you make. Yeah, it, it, it does not it, discriminate. It does definitely does. Definitely does not discriminate. You know what else I was thinking about trying to have on here? How about Paul Thompson? I think that'd be great. A great story, wouldn't it? And, and he's doing paralegal shit, man. Um, like He's been getting people out of trouble, from my well, understanding, out of drug trouble. Well, and he was my lawyer for my second DUI, which was down in Front Royal. He was my co-defendant's lawyer on our federal case. Oh, no shit. Yeah. I mean, he was a beast. Yes. Bo Bassler wouldn't be what he is today if Without, it wasn't for Paul. Probably not. But Paul, you know, he was in the height of his addiction when he was my lawyer. And I was working at Sweet Caroline's at the time. And I got my second DUI. He told me $2,500. I paid him maybe like 400. Well, he didn't show up to like three of my court dates. Really? The one that he didn't show up, his name got called because I guess he got a speeding ticket on the way down to one of them. Hmm. And I was like, oh, well, yeah. This is going a little south for me. So I got a second offense DUI, got 10 days, which is like pretty much, he didn't do shit for me. Right. And... Didn't even get the goddamn speeding ticket dropped. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm definitely interested to talk to him because he was making all that money. He was a prosecutor and then it just it, it enveloped him in the same way it did us. Well, you know, and I think it's interesting that those people aren't untouchable sometimes. Well, and I just think it's really funny how a prosecutor can go from a prosecutor putting people in jail for this shit to turning around. And now you're going to represent these motherfuckers. Yeah, it's money. And our jail's guess privately I, owned by the judges and the lawyers. They're all in each other's pockets. Right, right, and, yeah, oh, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll give you this guy if you give me this guy. You know that's how it works. Oh, shit. <laughs> of course you know that's how it works. Ugh. But, yeah, man, like, it, it's that's wicked. I don't trip on that. Ah, that's cool. There you go. We'll get Thank it you, bro. Yeah, man. Don't worry about it. It's just so wicked how when you're going through that, addiction process and everything like you literally if you want to get over it you have to rewire your whole fucking brain okay so that's one thing i've been going through lately uh because everything to do with addiction is dopamine yeah so i've been learning how to turn my dopamine switches on for other things such as uh, uh activities making, making content um i'm trying to turn it on more for going to the gym because i've gotten really bad at yeah that. no shit i need to start doing that so more. instead of here's my theory <laughs> We're overstimulated. I think our bodies are savage bodies. I think Correct. we're made to go over and hit that woman on the head, grab her by her ponytail, and drag her back to the cave. Our dopamine's supposed to go <laughs> yes. off. Yes. <laughs> I think when we build that cave, our dopamine's supposed to go off. I think when we right. kill that rabbit or that deer and we get some food for our family, that dopamine's supposed to go Absolutely. off. Absolutely. So that dopamine might be a level six or seven. Okay, that's where it's supposed to be. In our world of TikToks and uh pornography which is all and drugs distractions and it's all dopamine yeah it's all waiting on that desk. so we're being rewarded for doing nothing nothing but flipping a screen dude bro i have not watched tv i gave up on sports i used to be a huge sports fan i didn't watch any football this year nor last year i gave up on it because all it is is to distract you mm -hmm. and to take away and it, and it also just keeps you uh, work that eight hours, come home, watch the the dumb stupid yeah. TV, or and then every time a commercial comes on the TV, flip to your TikTok. Yep. 
No, that's, and then maybe you're watching both at the same time. Right. And dude, that's overstimulation for your body. And there's for you're never finding satisfaction in doing never. the productive things. Now, here's the thing that I picked up instead. I've, I, I refound a, a, a love for reading while, while the 22 Absolutely. months I was in there. There's no I, way I read a lot. Of, I've read a lot of personal uh, growth and like just very positive, you know, it, I would have told you like two, three years ago, like people that are like, you know, no negativity and blah, 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 just be positive. Blah, blah, blah. I would have told you that shit don't fucking work. Mm -hmm. I'm living proof it does yeah, work. Yeah, because you had that negative attitude then. And as soon as somebody told you to be positive, he was like negative and he was right. like, fuck you. Well, and if you cut those negative people from your life and shit like that, man. It makes your life so much better. And they, I've seen like documentaries where they'll have like a a jar of water and the one kids are yelling at it. I hate you just like negative shit. But then the one that's like getting love and everything like that is like a million times better. And it's just like, and that's just water. Hmm. So... It, it, it's crazy. It actually really does work. So you think there's a conscious effort that comes with it every day that you actually have to think about shit like that? I don't think that you have to think about it, but you have to learn how to rewire your brain to where like a word I don't like to use is hate. Hate's a very powerful word. So I try to use like if I dislike something, mm -hmm. I dislike it. Mm -hmm. So I try to use different ways, but like, I'm also very impulsive. So I've kinda, I kind of suck at it at times too. So, but uh, the more you can keep your brain, like the wheels going and distract your own self, but with stuff that you like. Right. So like last night I wrote like the uh, 30 human rights because I didn't know them all. And I, I got like, I didn't want to do it at first. But then once I started getting into it, I was like, man, it's pretty fucking cool. And then I just want to keep learning more and more. And see, that's what has to happen is you have to turn that switch on that sets that that good feeling center of your dopamine off. Absolutely. Because you learn something. You get to the point of doing something like, you know, uh, getting all this done. It, I've tried so hard not to focus on anything else, but what I'm doing, I'm tattooing, I'm doing these podcasts. That's it. Yeah. I might, like I helped my daughter get a car yesterday. You know, that took all day long. But regardless, that's a little break from what I needed anyway. It's time to spend with my kid. But then I'm right back to it first right. thing this morning, bro. Yeah. And I used to get up in the mornings. I always watch Gutfeld, which is a late night show. Okay. I watch it every morning, a little political, a little humor. I right. watch that. It's like 45 minutes to an hour or whatever. Uh, and then I have a choice to do whatever. Yeah. Right? So do I turn on YouTube? Do I go to the gym? Do I draw this picture? One thing I don't do is turn on YouTube. I don't flip yeah, my Yeah, man, you'll get on that, dude. I don't, get, I don't get on this flipping. I don't get on this flipping. I turn everything off, and I sit there until I fucking come up with something to do. Right. Until I'm like, I'm sitting here bored. What can I do? What can I do? And then eventually I'll get up and do something. You know what really works for me, though? Making a list. Yes, absolutely. Goals. I, I have yeah. whiteboards everywhere. Everywhere, I have man. whiteboards everywhere with when, what I need to do. When I do a list and I actually complete that motherfucker... Like you just feel like that accomplishment, yes. that that goodness within you. I've been you. trying to tell my fuckers that for a while now, and it's something so fucking little. So that's one of the things that if you ask the most uh, prominent billionaires and moneymaker people in the world what they can attribute most of their success to, they'll tell you an assistant or yeah. a, a post-it notes yep. or a reminder app on their phone. Absolutely, so that they don't forget to do the important shit. And it's something that small and simple. It is like I want to get like a really nice recorder. Like to where I can like just be like note to self, da da da, da. right? Because uh, I'm forgetful in my I'll be 42 on next Monday. So, so hey, speak, speaking of 42, you know you can do that on your phone, right, old man? I got a piece of shit galaxy <laughs> that I hate. Okay, but once I get this uh, my iPhone un unlocked. I paid money to this company, and now I got to pay 50 more dollars to actually see if it works. If it does, cool. If it doesn't, then they give me my money back. Yeah. But iPhone's where it's at. Galaxy suck dick. 
I just upgraded the my iPhones perfect. too, man. I've been a Galaxy Love. dude my whole life. But here's the thing, man. You get to where you just don't want to change. And I true, think that's the true. The one thing I like about Galaxies and Androids is they got the numbers up top. So you ain't got to go to like a, like the ABCs and then go to the second thing just to get to the numbers and the asterisks and shit like that. It's one thing I, I will give Android and Galaxies. Other than that, I fucking hate them. <laughs> yeah, definitely fan but I've had an iPhone since the iPhone 4. Yeah. So, but like... You know, to actually make a change in your life and to do better and everything like that, it all starts within yourself, man. For sure. And it, it it's so funny, like, as you progress and stuff like that and people actually start seeing it within you, dude, that euphoric feeling feels better than fucking damn near any drug I've done. It definitely does. Because as any addict is going to feel, you're going to feel the people that are disappointed in you. Right. You're going to see the people that you let down. You're going to see how what you've done has affected their life. The hardest thing is forgiveness. And that's one thing I've worked on. Because I've had a lot of people fuck me over, do me dirty and shit like that. But you know what? I've been there. To forgive them. Now, granted, I'm not going to go kick it with them no more. But I'll forgive you and be like, you know, I I want nothing but the best for you. And leave it at that and walk away. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely hard to do sometimes to humble yourself to that point. I just, me and my mother got into it real bad on Christmas Day. And I, I was involved in a situation where me and my stepfather had gotten into it. Uh, he sucker punched me. I beat the shit out of him. Well, during the process, my mother got struck. And she, to this day, blames it on my wife, well, ex-wife now, Samantha. Samantha wore gaudy ass rings on every fucking finger, bro. Like, if she would have punched my mom in the face, she would have mangled her. Mm-hmm. And my mom, on Christmas Day, she was like, well, how's your one buddy doing? And I'm like, He's doing all right. And then he asked about his brother, who's the one that got with my wife while I was incarcerated. Fucking piece of shit. But uh, they're no longer together, which is cool. So she asked about him. I'm like, why, why the fuck would you ask about him? And she was like, well, what about Samantha? And I was like, Samantha's actually doing really good. I'm proud of her. You know, she... Is no longer doing drugs. She's a proud mother of two. She's come a long way. She was like, well, I'll never forgive her for what she did to me. And I was like, what she do to you? She was like, she punched me in the face that night. I was like, mom, you were so fucking intoxicated that night. You didn't get hit by her. You got hit by the back of my elbow because you were trying to get me off Jeff. Because I had a big ass bruise right here. Had no idea where the fuck it came from. But I'm sitting there thinking about it, and I'm like, if I'm sitting there punching them, and she comes up to try to get me off, she's only five foot two. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, Mom. But she's still mad over something that she don't even know really what happened. And they're the ones that started this shit, too. They were so fucking drunk coming over there talking shit to my wife about her deceased father and calling her names and shit like that. And... You all started this altercation that fucked my life up, and I am not going to let you sit there and to this day put blame on someone that did not do what you're claiming they did. And she couldn't accept that. And I was like, you know what? Then we just don't need to talk ever again. Yeah. Because I'm telling you the truth. And you were so intoxicated. I got the videos from that night, dude. I sent them to her. She won't watch them. Yeah, well, sometimes people don't like to have the real shit put in their face either. They want to believe what they want to believe. Well, and they were always the type that, like, you know, we could get into this huge altercation and then act like it never happened the next day. I hate, I can't, yeah, I, I, can't I cannot that stand that, man. If I get to the point that I'm mad enough to cuss at you or make you feel a certain right. way, then I felt that way. Right. And, and I, I feel the same way. If you're going to cuss at me and call me this certain shit and say all this stuff yeah. about me, to think I can just turn right around and say, you know what? It's cool that you hey, called me. Hey, thanks, a, buddy. You know, it's okay. All the things you said, yeah yesterday like i just feel like i don't let that shit leave my mouth very well, easily and we're adults right Grow let's up. talk let's let's break this down you know 
you're entitled to your opinion and the way that you feel and everything like that. And I will hear you out, but do the same for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hear me out. Yeah. All right, so look, let's uh, yeah. let's fire this joint up. Yeah, man. And then, uh, so let me ask you a look couple little off the head questions here. Yeah, yeah. If you could get in a time machine and go back to a certain spot in your life where shit went sideways, and you could talk <laughs> to yourself, or you could talk to another person, or you could change it, is there a spot? Is there a place you can you can nail down and say this is where I started fucking up? Absolutely. It was so I had a lot of freedom as a child to pretty much do whatever the fuck I wanted ever since I was like 10. I never had like babysitters and shit like that. My mom owned her own hair salon. My dad worked for UPS. I never had that parental guidance. Right, where'd you grow up? Around this area? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and what really fucked me up was thinking that I could just do whatever I wanted and there's no consequences. Well, 42-year-old me now knows the motherfucking consequences, but honestly, I wouldn't change a goddamn thing because I wouldn't know half the shit I know to this day if I didn't go through all that bullshit to get here. Right. So, but if I could change one thing, I would have never, ever have gone down the opiate route because that ate up 10 years of my life, my daughter's first eight years. But I was always a great father, always there. When I had her in my care, I never got to that point. I would do what I had to do to not be sick. Right. And keep it at that. Yeah, that wasn't the way it was for me. I, got, I, I would get so fucking sloshed that, you know, everything I did, Everything I did on opiates affected the people that I care about. Exactly. And that's what I regret. Yeah. Did I learn lessons? And if it would, if those lessons could only affect me to make me who I am now, then whatever. I guess I'd stay who I am. Right. But if I could take all that back so it didn't affect my kid, my Absolutely. mom. Absolutely. In a heartbeat. My son, my daughter. Same. Like, dude, that's, that's my regret is Same. that I hurt them through my bullshit. Right. Same. And, I, you know, I'm going through it now. I haven't seen my daughter since she was eight years old. My baby mama... And my mother teamed up against me and got me to sign my rights over because I owed like almost three grand and they were going to keep putting me in jail and shit. So April was like, Wes, you're always going to be her father. You need to get you better. She was like, you sign the rights over. You're always going to be her father. You're always going to be in her life. She promised me this shit. I've been clean since... June 12th, 2020, off of opiates. I hit her up as soon as I got out. Every couple, every week, I'd hit her up, ask her how she's doing in school, how's this, da da da. She wouldn't respond, wouldn't respond. I don't even answer. So then finally, she responds and she's like, My daughter is doing fine. And I was like, April, can I please just take her out to like, Munch, dinner. You can be there. Nah. She said feels I, threatened. Said I needed a few more years under my belt. Yeah, she feels she feels threatened by you. Yeah, but yet alcohol was totally okay for her. Like, her being an alcoholic is cool because it's legal. Right, yeah. Alcoholics are the worst, man. Like, alcohol just makes you a totally different monster. Especially when you're on that shit hardcore. Like, I drink beer almost every day, but I don't get drunk. Right, exactly. I'm not right. a drunk. I don't like, get drunk. I'm talking about the alcoholic that you see all yeah, the different signs. And, like, I dealt with one last night. One minute she's wanting to suck my dick. The next minute she's trying to kick me out of bed. And, and I'm just like. So confusing. You're so manic. Like, oh, like. Yeah, yeah, but I, I grew up around alcoholics because my grandmother and grandfather were both drunkards hell, and right. my father was too. So I just seen people falling around, right? Uh, burning their hands on wood stoves. Yeah, fucking. I seen my grandma fall down one time, and I watched her head bounce off the fucking floor like a basketball, bro. Yeah, like it damn, hit the bro. ground so far, so hard, and I'm like nine, probably had 10 a concussion, years old. didn't even know it, bro. And she just went out. 
wham. I mean, she hit the floor so hard and, and she was right in the hallway. I couldn't move her. Nah. Dude, I got a pillow and blanket. I put her head on a fucking pillow and, you, and covered her up and went to bed. Like, what are you supposed to do in those situations? Exactly. Especially being nine years old, having to go through that and that trauma right there. It might be why I don't like alcohol as much as I do. Because I didn't even start drinking beer until I was 35. Well, and don't get me wrong. I was a bartender for 20 right, years, right? That. And I would never consider myself an alcoholic because, like, you know, I couldn't wake up and just start drinking. I could. I, I, no. I was never that person. Now, did I have a lot of parties and get fucking drunker and <coughs> God knows what? Absolutely. But right. you know what? A lot of the dumb shit that I've learned in my lifetime. Oh, I'm good. That's all you want? Uh, yeah, that's the first time I've smoked in fucking since 2020. What? That all, <laughs> that all, you got paper? You don't have paper? So my PO is cool as shit, They man. don't give a fuck about weed, no way, bro. Nah, man. And plus, like, honestly... I'm at the, so I have three years probation, right? After a year and a half, I can petition it. And I'm at that point, buddy. Mm -hmm. And my PO is so cool with me, bro. She How's that been going? So paper, paper's been going good? Like so when I first met my first probation officer, his name is Will Jones. And I went in and the first time I actually sat in his office and talked to him, I had already taken myself off the of boxing clinic. And he was like, we don't even need to go over a treatment plan. You're already doing everything you're supposed to be doing. Right. Taking steps. He was like, you know, in six months from now, I'll make it to where you only got to come in every three months. He did that the next time I saw him. That's what they're supposed to do, though, man. I've had them do that before, too. Um, where you have to be careful is if you're using, they're right. going to gonna set you up. Absolutely. And they're going to hit you up for that piss test. So they hit you for a piss test since inducing the three-month thing? Nope. Really? I have not, trust I, you good then. I have yet to go in for a random. And I mean, knock on wood, but even if I do, I can't, I'm not going to fail for mushrooms because right. you can't test for that. Right. You don't smoke weed. No, that, that's the first and time. And they don't even care about that. No, nah, I they mean, really some, of them, some of them will be like, you know, get your medical card. Yeah. Blah, blah. As long as you do that, yeah. you're good. It's 100 bucks. But like, so my PO I got now, her name's Kelly Green. Cool as the other side of the pillow. The first time I met her, didn't even drug test me. I went and saw her again three months later, didn't drug test me. Went and saw her three months later, drug tested me, passed, mm -hmm. passed. I've seen her, and I see her every three months. I go see her next month in February, like February 15th. If she drug tests me then, it'll be the third time throughout like seven visits with her. Yeah, man. Uh, like if, if, I feel like, too, they're looking at a chart, and your chart says whatever it says, because mine was like a seven or eight for an increased Well, and you have your levels like and, high risk, right. medium, da, 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 I was da. way high. So was I, because I opiates. And now, if you fail for fentanyl, they got to lock you up right You're then done. and there, because- That's all they really you care are, about. You are now a risk to them, because if they let you go, and you go out and die that night, on that's them. on them. Yeah. So, so that was definitely uh, the end of my probation was over all that same type of stuff. And I was smoking weed. Um, I had a legitimate card and all that stuff. Right. But I went in. You know how this probation set up up here? That little rear view window. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I went in with a, a device. Yeah, the whistinator. Yeah, bro. But mine's not a whistinator. I just get like the drops for my eyes. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I've been doing this for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Same here. And I've gotten away with yeah. hundreds. Well, not hundreds, but plenty of fucking yeah. urine screens that way. So I go in there. As soon as I go in, he's like, what do you, what do you got? What do you got? Next thing you know, he's opening the door, bro. And I'm what? standing there with this joint in my hand. I swear, bro, I know I'm and going to jail. And that could be a charge right there, too. I know, I know I'm going to jail. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Hey. So he pulls me. I was like, what do you got? What do you got? And I was like, fuck, man. I gave it to him. How do you see and it? Because the rear view mirror where they're looking at your wiener. Wow. They got a rear view. They got a double edge glass right there. They hand your jug out wow. right there. You get your jug and then their mirror is looking right at you. And you there's footprints for you to put your feet. You can't even stand a different way. Now I understand being on probation, you give up your fourth amendment right, which is seize, uh search and seizure. What right did I give up for this motherfucker to look at my goddamn dick? To be dick? staring there, bro. So anyways, I pulled it out and uh, he had he had done called his you know manager whatever yeah. she come over she's like jamie what's going on this that and the other and i was like look man <laughs> y'all know how this works bro you all yeah. y'all try to lock me yeah. up i try to get cat, away cat and mouse, i've been doing mouse. this my whole life yeah. man like what do y'all want to do yeah and he's like what are you dirty for i'm dirty for pot yeah. he's like we don't even care about pot folks <laughs> 
He's like, I literally don't even care about pot. Right. He's like, can you pass the piss test right now? I was like, yeah, I can pass, but I don't. But I can't, not for weed. I can't pee. Yeah. I was like, I just can't pee. I was like, I'll go in here and try. I went in there and tried to piss. I couldn't piss. It's five o'clock, so they want to leave. Right. He's like, be here at eight o'clock in the morning. Right. Showed up eight o'clock in the morning, full of coffee, filled that motherfucker up, passed, yep. and he let me go. That, Which and me that's out. what they should do. Right, because I was like, I did break whatever it was, but once you right. found out I was clean, you didn't yeah. really give a fuck because you understand that it's me against you. Yep. And absolutely. that's the game we've been taught. Well, and you not, and I both, we've been taught that since we were young. It's you motherfuckers against us. Yep. We try to get away, you try yep. to catch us. And, and like when you were actively using though, like when it's not marijuana, like say it's opiates or what have you. You fucking, you put the blame on them when in all reality it's you. It's all on you. It's always you. Absolutely. And if you can't realize that, then you're going to keep fucking going through that repetitive cycle. Yeah, and if you can't find a way to beat it, you're going to jail a lot. Break break the cycle. I missed a lot of jail time from, from, you know, being able to get over on them. But did it help me? It probably didn't help me at all. No. You know what I mean? In the long run, it didn't help me because maybe I would have got locked up earlier and I wouldn't have had to do six years in the feds. You know, and, and, and you know, it sucks so bad. Like, I've probably given up about three and a half, maybe four years of my life to the system. But in all reality, I do my time because I did the dumb shit to get me there. Yeah, These facts. kids nowadays, they glorify being a goddamn fucking rat, a goddamn snitch. Yes. And it's like, it's a different culture in today's wow. prisons and jails completely. So when you was in, yeah. how many pedophiles was you doing time with? How many people walked around well, with like crazy well, charges and, and, like that? And, and that's the funny thing at the Winchester Inn, as I like to call it. They put you in straight population with everybody. Yeah. I was in there with eight different murderers. Uh, chomos galore. And see, that's crazy. And, and 90% because- of them were, were Latino. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that too. Um, and in this area, or when I used to get locked up, and again, it's a long time ago, hey. the culture around here has changed because, again, there's a lot of Mexican people Absolutely. around here. But I noticed that last but time I was here. Their culture in too, is fucked up like that, though. And to the point of where they're allowed to marry those younger like girls 10 years. down there. Hey. And it's like, so then they're coming here where it's against the law exactly. and they've been taught something exactly. different. Exactly. I mean, I respect them because they're trying to have a better life by coming over here. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't yeah. think we have the. The room for everyone and they should right. be, you know, we're lucky enough to be born here. Does that mean we fucking got a privilege? Okay, whatever. Hey, if you want to come here and thrive, thrive. Do it. Do it. I'm all for that. Yeah. But, and here's another part that's a problem is, is how can you blame them for coming over and bettering themselves? And then the motherfuckers here don't even want to work. Yeah. Like they, at least these guys are coming yeah. over and they have work, jobs. Working they these work jobs that nobody wants that to nobody work wants for to fucking do. $10 a goddamn hour. Out in the freezing cold, and these punk ass kids Busting think they their need asses. 15. Half these goddamn houses and townhouses around here are built by these motherfuckers. They are, they are. and they they are hard working. And look how they've taken people. over these strip malls. <laughs> yeah, every strip mall around here is Mexican rented. And, I guess and, it's Mexican and, leased. And you know what? They got the best soda because they got the uh, Pepsi and Coke from Mexico. Okay, never tried that. It. Has real sugar. It doesn't have this fucking okay. high fructose bullshit. That fucking eat your brain. This is the only country that is not uh, banned in. It's not alert. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen it's some horrible for you. Too. You know what? We're going to do, we'll come yeah. back one time. We'll do a podcast Absolutely. On, uh, on some politics and things like Absolutely. that. Because I know you're studying that shit. And yeah. then uh, we'll also do one on uh, like foods. Foods? And, Hell and yeah. Waters and all the stuff we put into our bodies. Yeah. It changes everything that's going on, man. Because I think evolution has been changed by what we oh, use absolutely, every day. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of facts towards the plastics that we use, the microplastics in our life. The changing. deodorant, the toothpaste, and, all I mean, that shit. you have shit. homosexual act- activity happen in bears. Yeah. Like, come on, man. This is not a part of nature. And it's no. because of something we are uh, excreting into the environment, well, you, into our water, yep. whether it's estrogen there's just weird stuff going on when, man. when you're giving a four-year-old an option to be a boy or a fucking girl yeah like that's that, that's, that's definitely it, the it, world's it, gone crazy it's a fucked up world and i thought as uh fucking technology and everything fucking evolved blah 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 we'd be fucking smart civilized fuck no we're yeah, going the think, opposite yeah, goddamn man, but way everything's based on a feeling it it's, is it's not based on facts it's not based on rational thought and, and that, that that makes you live you normal go. and there you said it right there rational thought and here's another thing people don't want to fucking research shit anymore no. i love it they just want to take you they just want to take it. your word 
I love they it. see something they like and they they want to they want to stand it up in front of them and say this is what this says and I believe right. this so I'm going to stand behind this and they don't want to know if they're right or wrong I they could, just like the fact that they believe it I couldn't tell you how many people fucking like well I've got four uh, I got four pentagrams on my vehicle two on each rear view mirror like my driver mirrors and then two on my back windshield okay guess what it's not just for Satanist. It's also for Wiccan, which a lot of people will say, oh, that's da da da. No, it's about nature more than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it also, Michael, Michelangelo, the dude fucking back in like the whatever centuries. Okay. That is a pentagram. His body, mm-hmm. that's what it represents. Now, people will put their twist on it just like the swastika in fucking the Buddhist community is a peace sign. Right. You know, so I like that I have that knowledge. So when I do come across somebody that just hasn't done their research, then I get to have a debate. Yeah, yeah. And it's not also, I feel like when you're coming into that debate, you can't come into it with, a, I just want to prove you wrong type right, shit. Right, you have right, to come right. in with, I want to educate this person. A uh, black dude that I worked with at Capitol Building Supply, his name was Ron. Uh, one day he came up to me and he was like, what are the meanings of those? And I was like, man, I'm honestly glad you asked and didn't just, you know, assume. assume. And then he was like, well, I know that you're a very knowledgeable person. And I figured, you know, you wouldn't just put some shit like that unless you actually had a knowledge of it. And that's when I broke it down for him. And he was like, I had no idea. He was like, right. I knew about the satanic version of it, but I didn't know those other ones. And it's like, yeah, man, I think there's a lot of things to be said about shit like that, too, man. Absolutely. To, to know about, I got a lot of useless facts going around in my head, too, for just, <laughs> just things that I find interesting. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then uh, sometimes I'll teach it to people, like this clapper that we open with. Yeah, you yeah, know where they yeah. started from? Huh. That was so you could line up the sound with the video. Really? Because so that they would. You would see that thing yeah. snap and you would hear it in the audio. You could line those two things up. And right. Back, now in, the, back in the days when they actually had to piece everything. Yeah, and now your lips are synced up. I did up. not know that. So I like thought that was interesting. The Charlie Chaplin days and shit Absolutely. like that. <laughs> Which is why I put it in because I thought that fact was so interesting. Yeah. And I was like, I seen this intro with it in there. When you see it, you'll dig it. And that's so cool because I, I never would have even. of. Like when I see it, I just see it. Like I, I don't right, like. No, no, but that's so cool. I'm you know that. Forty seven years old. Yeah, never dude. Known that. Never just knew found that. that out. Fucking and you've been seeing it since month. you were a fucking kid. Since last month, I that's just learned. Crazy. It, but I that's crazy. That's cool though. That's cool as shit. And like that's what I like is like things that like you know your brain isn't always going to pick up on it, but then when it finally does, and you're like, man, I've been seeing this ever since I, yes. I was a youngster, right. and now I know about it. And if anybody cares. To listen. Right. I'll tell you. Yeah. I listened to a great song the other day. It reminds me of the same thing. And man, dude, I wish I could play it right now. I'll play it for you when we get yeah, down yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, But I had to play the video. Man, this dude sings into this motherfucking mic and he's out in the woods playing a guitar and the feeling in this oh, song dude. is so deep and Music so Music is strong. so powerful. And he's he's screaming at the microphone, and I I, I think it. it's about addiction because he's yeah. talking about his mom. Not and that's what another best thing about it yes. is. It and then means he's talking about different. how he's like, I'm tired of you hurting me. I'm tired of spending money on you, and you can just see it at yeah. his face. You feel it. And when he gets done, like he's just and they just and he's got this look, man. Yeah. It's so powerful. It's but so strong. You and I are on the same level when it comes to music. I can't stand a motherfucker that just. Uh, I don't know what the lyrics mean. I, I just listen to it for the no. beat or blah, blah, blah. That's not music. music. It has a feeling. It it has a power. It's the soundtrack to our lives. Like, and if it, it wasn't for music, I'd rather be dead. Dude, dude. And, and here, so let me ask you this. There's another thing I get when I, you ever been to the hole? You ever do the whole time when you was in jail? Oh, yeah. yeah. How much time much whole time I, you I did? I did 40 days out of a four-month bid. I did 40 days back in the hole. Right. By yourself or with a celly? So the first time I had a celly... The second time I had a celly, and then the third time I was solo. So when I was in, it was uh, I did prison time with a celly, but uh, in jail I did a lot of lot. But uh, we was allowed to have a radios back then. This is before they took mats, before they like to where you could actually toilet. play it like yeah, in here. You had, yeah, you had yeah, your radio, yeah. you could put you know I now put you my head take books uh, yeah. covers and, <laughs> and fix it all up, make me a little Dude. speaker out of there. So I would do that. And I remember being in there and there's nothing. We was talking about dopamine hits and all that shit earlier. There's nothing to get those things going. Right. There's a book. 
There's a conversation that you're having with someone. And since you can't play cards or do any of them other things, those things aren't stimulating you. And the music would get me to the point of giddiness yeah, sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Where someone would come on and I'd be singing and I would just feel this fucking... And, and since then, I've turned off all the YouTubes and all that shit, the music's doing that for me yep, again. Exactly. And that's what these songs have beautiful. been doing recently. It's like I just put my headphones on so I can hear it and there's no fucking background noise of anybody talking or anything. And I lock into that fucking music, dude. And it just takes me to another place, man. Well, and music is a time wave like you can go back and hear a song you haven't heard in 20 fucking years yes. but you'll remember where you were the what nostalgia. buddies what party like the nostalgia you, behind and, the music is absolutely it is beautiful there. man like and sometimes it's music. a sad time sometimes it might absolutely. have been a song you listen to after Yo, a heartbreak anytime i hear snuff by slipknot mm -hmm. i instantly like it's, tear up and it's, cry. It's giving you goosebumps and shit. Yeah, fucking yeah, right yeah. now. I know, bro. I know. That's what I love about it, bro. That's what I love about music too, man. And, and, how and I try to spread that as much as I can to every person that'll listen. If you want to listen to music and you want to hear strong, powerful music, yeah, I probably have some to share. Absolutely. With you. It's poetry. It's fucking, it is by far my best release. My it's my go-to. Yeah. Going to live shows, there's nothing better except for somebody that's terrible. But like now I'm starting to branch out like I want to go see this dude this year, Pretty Lights. Okay. This dude is a musical genius. He can put so many different styles of music into what he plays you. And every show you go to, they, they don't have a set list. They just fucking go, go rock with it. it. Out. No show, no show he does is so, the same. What do you think about uh, Falling in Reverse? So I like Falling in Reverse. Uh, he, he did time. He was Ronnie incarcerated. Ragney, Ronnie yep, Radke. Yep. I've been doing a little research on him. I did a reaction video. Had a bunch of responses, so which made me look into him more. So popular monster, love it. Great. Now that when you break that song down, oh my god, powerful fucking lyrics. For sure. But I'm not a fan of like a lot of all their songs. Like I like a lot of their older stuff that I've listened How to. How about like Let the World Burn where they're doing the rapping? <sighs> mm. I, it wouldn't be my go-to. Right. But I mean, I'm not going to sit it's, there. Uh, the way I describe it, it's uh, it, it's outfit music. Yeah, yeah. You have a pair of green and white shoes. You got to wear a green Absolutely. and white shirt. Absolutely. So there's got to be a feeling just, for me that's my shoes correct. to make me wear that shirt. Like, just like if, when I get down with a uh, fucking Bring Me the Horizon. Like, when I get into that shit, I'm like, Fuck yeah. And it takes you to a different place. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's why I love doing my playlist. Like, I'll have like my Rage Room one. I'll have my fucking, God damn it. She fucking left me and took the dog <laughs> <laughs> playlist. Hey, and when we grew up, though, everybody was genre fied. Hey, man. We you had, were the rock we, guy or yep, you were the rap yep, guy or you yep. listened to this band or that band. I, I feel like we have so become a melting pot so of music. So diverse now. It doesn't matter, man. So like, diverse. I don't even care. I, I'm not a big country music fan when it comes to that twang. Oh, uh, yeah. Twang. I can't do the twang. But if it's got a good story, oh, it's yeah. got a good feeling, I I'm going to listen to it. I got some it. good shit. Uh, this fucking slut bag girl that I just stopped putting my dick in because found out she was whore. But, man, God, the things she could do. God <laughs> bless her. <laughs> but she turned me on to this song that I wouldn't have listened to on my own because it, it's country. Okay. But it's almost got that Southern, like, just. Okay. What is it? Uh, Never going to remember. Song, I, I can't remember his name, but the song is Wild As Her. Okay. And it. it it Good. made me think of that girl. Every time I hear that song, that's of Alicia's course. song. Of so, you know, you it's cool. It's cool. But uh, hmm. my music has gotten way more diverse the older I've gotten. I'll even listen to motherfucking Avril Lavigne nowadays. Yeah. Because a lot of her songs, like, were pretty powerful for her being as young as she was putting that shit out. Like... I give her respect. And now she's even putting music out to this day with Travis Barker as her producer and still killing it. Yeah, she's hot. And fucking absolutely. Pink, love her. Yeah, she's definitely an artist. It's yeah, yeah. well, well deserved. I she, think she's very talented. She does that trapeze stuff, that's, man. That's what I'm talking about the most. Of right. All, for sure. But if you would have told me back then between Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and motherfucking Pink, which one was going to still be here to this day? 
killing, it. killing it. Pink yeah. fucked them all. I think up. that comes a part of being any kind of uh, musician, creator, actor, things like that. You have to be able to find a balance, right? That right. You don't burn out too soon. Well, not only that, but like you know, you take someone like Britney Spears, who was pretty much uh, she, she, her singing live is horrible, right? Fucking god off. Mm. So she was just a Mickey Mouse little thing, and then they were like, "Oh, she's a pretty girl." Let's make her sing. Right. Pink? Pink's always had it. She could sing from the time she was a little girl. Getting it. Fucking killing it. But that's music, man. Like, I could yeah. talk music for fucking years. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely a lot of shit to talk about. A lot of things to, to bring out. Absolutely. Um, they would do one show or something. We would bring, I could bring a computer or something. Yeah. We can just get it like, like past the ox cord, we'll call it or well, something. Well, and not only that, but like, you can give me your... Like input. what it what you what it makes you actually feel, and then what I actually felt right. from it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it everybody takes it a different. That's why way. I enjoy doing reaction videos on this channel. Sometimes is because the music makes me feel a certain way, and I want to spread still that. Get, shit. I'm still getting goosebumps. Yeah, man, <laughs> music's definitely a life changing thing for all of us that that are into it the way that you and I oh are. Oh my into god, it. I listen to music all night while I sleep. Same here. I never turn it Same off. Same here. It's I got every minute. I got my system else. in my little alien looking car. I got like when I play music, I want to feel that shit. Mm -hmm. Like I want to feel like I'm at that live show. Right. Because there's nothing else that compares. Right. Nothing else. So with that too, man, anything else you want to say? Like you got a philosophy for the world. I feel like basically what your philosophy is, is shit. like you got to deal with yourself before you can deal with addiction type shit. Absolutely. Man. When it comes to addiction, the best thing you can do is sit yourself down in front of a fucking mirror and just don't hold back. But actually retain it. Figure out what's really wrong with you. Exactly. And you got to listen to people too, man. You got to listen to, especially people that give a shit about you. If they're giving you input, you have to listen to that. Well, and not only that, but even somebody I don't like could give me a valuable piece of yes. words of wisdom that could maybe one day save my life or do something for me to yes. where, you know, yeah, so. Yeah. Perfect example is I had this, uh, this dude in prison. Hated him, couldn't stand us, called us crackers, all kind of shit. And I just thought it was <laughs> fucked up that he could go around saying shit like that. Right. Nobody ever cared. But uh, he said one time, he was like, words are like bullets from a gun. Once you shoot it, you can't pull that bullet back. True. So once I say something to you, it's gone. It's out there. I've already yeah, said it. It's, I can't, it's apologies gone. doesn't matter, whatever, because yeah. you're going to take it the way you took it. I said Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That always stuck with me, regardless if I couldn't stand that fucking bald-headed fucker or not. <laughs> um, but the thing is, Words are weapons. Yeah. And, and sometimes they're intended to hurt you. Absolutely. Yeah, but guess people what? People want to hurt you. That's in that moment. After I get over it and da 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 da, man, I really don't fucking like you, but I, I just can't be addicted to people. Like, mm. I, I just can't do it. Like, it's not in my nature. Yeah, I'm not a dickish person either, but I will cut a motherfucker off. Oh, yeah, I'll cut him off. You set, you set yeah. my expectations to a certain spot, and I think you're going to do this or you're yeah. going to do that, and you just keep letting me down, let me down, let me down, then I'm done. I'm not calling no yeah, more. Yeah, I'm not throwing that rope out there no yeah, more, I'm man. Like, I, 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 I've, I've exhausted myself, and you're, the stress from you ain't worth it in my life. Right. So, sadly, some people are just like that. You know, I mean, but no matter what, you got to take care of you, right? Absolutely. Like, that's the biggest thing that, that happens, man. When you get all strung out like that, that's like yeah. the last place I ever want to yep. end up. And I'm hoping that these these podcasts it, that I'm going to put out can help to show people. Yeah. That. And for real, like, bro, you don't want to live this way. The right. shit we went through Fuck is no, not man. worth it. Man. But, but it saved my life in the same sense. Yeah. You know, so you almost got to take a positive from the negative. Silver linings. Yeah, absolutely. And like, you know. I've done a lot of dumb, fucked up shit throughout my lifetime and everything like that. If I could, like, touch up some of the addiction shit, you know, things could have been better. But I like who I am today. Right. I, 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 I haven't been proud of myself in over, like, fucking five years. That feeling right there, untouchable. Yeah. Untouchable. For sure. Because I lost that. Shit, I lost it for over 10 years throughout that whole fucking addiction. But once I got that back, man, I was just like, man. Gotta learn to be high on that, don't you? I, I did all this on my own. 
Like that feeling of accomplishment, best feeling that I've had in my heart since the day my daughter was born. But you also got to know, can't let your guard down. Like for me to sit here and say, like, I, I'm never going to do cocaine again. Bullshit. But I have control over that. Opiates. That was my fucking kryptonite. I have no control. With yeah, that. I think that's something that's been hard for me ever since. It's, you know, I thought I was going to come home from prison and just kill everything. But I always had that in the back of my head that I could just use one or two. Right. And then I went back. And I'll be all right. But then you get into that that circle more than once, man. And I've learned how to not get in that circle. Yeah. Well, and like, you know, I've pretty much done goddamn every fucking drug you can think of. From huffing gasoline back in the day, fucking whippets, fucking hippie crack. Did all that. You know, and nothing ever, ever controlled. I was a puppet on a string. Like, I've never had that from any drug. That's a powerful motherfucker right there, because I'm a strong motherfucker. Right, and it's, I mean, it's stronger than love. Yeah. It's stronger oh, than absolutely. your love for your kids absolutely. or your mom or your girl. Absolutely. Or none of that shit can imagine nope. that feeling. Well, and not only that, but like, <laughs> you, you sit back and look at it now, and I'm like, why? Why did I allow that? But that's wisdom speaking, though. It and is. Wisdom comes from experience. You wouldn't it have is. that wisdom without the experience. Yeah. It's similar to the uh, movie The Time Machine. You ever seen that? Never seen it. Okay. So, dude's uh, building an invention, whatever. The chick dies. He he builds an invention to go back and save her life. He ends right. up millions of years into the future. Well, okay. Come to find out that he, he can't change the past. Nah. Because he it's gonna alter built, he built the time machine because of her. Okay. If she never okay. dies, you never build yeah, the time yeah. machine. Therefore, you can't go back. Yeah, it's gonna fucking alter I everything. I think it works a similar way. Very, very similar. And like, but the funny thing is, is like drugs have different effects on people. Like I can smoke crack and go to sleep. Right. Then Some you can, be then you got them fucking people that just sit there and pop, 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 pop looking out the windows and shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can smoke. Me too. I can drink beer though. Yeah. Uh, Scotty and them can't. Yeah. Yeah. But I can drink beers all the time and I'm not going right. to have an issue. I don't drive drunk nope. ever. Like maybe I'll have a beer and drive home from the bar, but right, I'm the right. type that I, I'm like, yeah. just give me a short. I, I was and the I'll DD. One. That was the DD for the show. Facts. Like, I we first went, met you. Right. You knew that. I was like, I'm not going unless yeah. we got somebody to drive us home, man, because yeah. we're going to be smashed from this. Oh, absolutely. And But like you're that fun drunk that like, you know, you. You're fun to be around, da, da da da. But then you got that person that can't can't control it, yeah. and they it's have annoying, annoying, the, or has yous. that fucking at one point he's ready to fight everybody. Yeah, you the, fucking the, the aggressor is the one I hate, and yeah, the lover is the one I hate. Yeah, the uh, the, the crier. Oh the, these God. are all oh God. Yeah, these are all genres of intoxication. I feel I'm like. so happy to see you. <laughs> I haven't seen you in like forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, man. man fuck all that shit seen that for over 20 years bartending but you know opiates at first you gave me a fucking perk or a panna da, da, da. I cleaned the whole goddamn house mm-hmm. fucking gave me energy for days yeah at first yeah. that was where mine started when no. I was biking and I was in work release I would get out of work release take a bike in, in the morning Lunchtime, I'd smoke a bowl and eat another Viking in the ES. And next yeah. thing I knew, the day was over. And I was yeah. like, this is Hell where it's at yeah. right here, bro. And you feel great. I felt great all day. I made oh, money. Yeah. The whole day's gone. Next thing you know, it takes 10 to do the yeah. same thing. Yeah, no and shit. you're like, well, I spent $25 to go oh, to work man, today. that tolerance is a motherfucker. Yeah, it's scary. And it, it, it happens fast. It does happen fast, man. But, you know, fucking like LSD, shit like that. I've tripped well over... Three, I've taken well over 300 hits of acid in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. The last time I tripped was when I was 29 years old. It was right before I had my daughter. And I had, my stepbrother had come in town, went to a bunch of hippie festivals, all good. Da, da, da. Well, he lived out in Northern California. He had a big ass bag of Cheez Its. Fucking the biggest bag. Well, right before he's getting ready to go back, he comes to the house with his bag with a 
crumbs like this huge. He splits the crumbs up into two piles. He was like, we could be doing 30 hits or we could be doing 500. Who knows? (laughs) I'm like, fuck my life. I tripped for 18 fucking hours. Man. And like when it hit me, we were at TGI Fridays and I couldn't take it. It sounded like people were talking gibberish. It was karaoke night. It was just too much. Too much going and on. I was like, I, I, I want to go. I want to go. I've never once felt that for mushrooms. Mushrooms, I'm happy. Colors are beautiful. And sex is out of this motherfucking world. Right on. It's like you become one with that person. Best orgasm I've ever had in my life. Definitely different. Yeah. It's kind of like MDMA. Absolutely. Yeah. But. To, to be able to sync up with the person on that level, it's hard to find without oh, something like that to help you over that threshold. Right, exactly. Yeah, I understand that experience completely. Yeah, so, you know, it, it affects everybody differently. And da, 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 da. It starts out good, but that divorce is a motherfucker. Right. God damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, getting over that shit sucks, man. It's the worst part of all. And I, I always end up doing it on hard plastic chairs and a fucking concrete <laughs> fucking mat. Bro. And, you know, you got the fucking phones occupied by the gang members. Oh, and man, it's too much going on. Oh, too much, too much, too so much. So what's up? Where can everybody find you, man? You got a social media that you use most of all? Yeah, man, or? I mean, I'm always on Facebook. Uh, granted, I don't really, like, I, I've, I've put a lot of cutbacks on, like, I don't do the social media as often. Uh, I haven't watched TV or sports in forever. The last TV show I watched, I watched uh fucking Wednesday, and that was over like probably almost a year ago. Right. And after that, I was just like, I want to see how long I can go. There you go. And yeah, so it's been about a year. And it's interesting podcast I just did with Brody, 23 years old, running his own business. Dropped yeah, all his social media too, man, because he's like, I was going down that rabbit yep. hole, man. You get down that rabbit hole, you just wasted all this are, time when you could have been productive. Right. It's, it's interesting that so many people are seeing it and mm-hmm. there's, there's information out there about how, you know what I mean? That yeah. like, it's an to, addiction. To the point it makes you think. It's like a hit of crack. Yeah, Come it's on, an man. addiction, man. Dude, I know Just people, like everything I, I know else. this kid is like when we're working, he won't even hold the board without pulling his phone out. You yeah. got to hold that board so I can Shit. cut it. And you got a phone in one hand. Yeah. No. Now, we came from the generation where cell phones started taking off and you right. get yelled at for having that motherfucker right. in your pocket at work. Yeah. For, for, now for you sure. go to goddamn Walmart and kids sitting there like. The whole while, time. While you ring yourself out. Yeah. While you ring hey, yourself hey, out there so, on the phone playing so fucking I called a dude Tetris over. or whatever the hell it is. Because I don't play none of that shit yeah. either. I have no games on no, my phone. Same never here. I don't play. I don't, I don't have a PlayStation. No, I got none, none of that, of that shit. shit. I don't do none of that shit. Yeah, same and here. And they say that that shit, it's worse than drugs. Yeah. The gamer shit is worse than drugs, bro. Yeah. Because the same way that you're going to game, game, game two, three hours. Let's yep. say smoke, crack, smoke, crack, smoke, crack. <laughs> now you go to work and you go to work and all you're thinking about is crack. Yeah. But all these yeah. kids are thinking about is games. Yeah. <laughs> They're watching the videos of people playing games. Yeah. Oh, dude, that is the dumbest break. shit ever. Who you, does this? You're watching a motherfucker play a goddamn game for and, real. And I guess they're what are they doing? Looking for cheat codes and things like that, bro. Because if you're trying to figure a way to get I, through the I don't game, get it. I could understand but the that's research their addiction, behind so. it. It is. That's their addiction. Hey, man. Maybe they look at us and they're like, "How'd you stick a fucking needle in your <laughs> arm, you stupid son of a bitch?" <laughs> we're sitting here cussing them. Yes, we're talking yes. about you, but we understand how you're, fucking hi- hypocritic it is. And at least. I'm sociable, you fucking anti-sociable right, right. Get out of your fucking basement. <laughs> you goddamn keyboard warriors. Yeah, man. Uh, but that's another reason I think that, that this format is going to give... Uh, Absolutely. And I haven't nailed down exactly how I want to put everything, but the format of people like us who've been through this shit like we've been, been through. Been through the ringer. And I'm not some movie star. I'm nobody. I'm a fucking okay. nobody, bro. Same Who here. But when it comes to addiction, when it comes to prison, when it comes to tattooing, these are things I know. These are things I can tell you about. Yeah. These are things that have value. My opinion has value in these things because I've been there. Right. And I can tell you how to do them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell you how to get rich because I'm broke. Hey, guess what? It's a lifelong battle too. Yeah, man. And and like so many people are listening to things like this to to see what they can get. I listen to them to see what I can get. I've learned so much from podcasts recently. Well, well and see, I haven't got into the podcast thing yet. Like I did like Joe Rogan because mm-hmm. he's a very knowledgeable person. But I would get into them damn rabbit holes, just like with TikTok and shit like that. And I had to put major 
like cutbacks. But I mean, I do check it. And, you know, I had actually thought about getting into like addiction counseling and stuff like that, but the pay really sucks and I got my CDL right. class A instead. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it's a lifelong battle and all right, one last thing I want to bring up, and then we're going to go. Yeah, yeah. Carpal tunnel, you just had carpal tunnel <laughs> surgery. How was that, dude? Because I have to have that done. My hands are so fucking bad, dog. Dude, I had never had a carpal tunnel sy- symptom until the accident I was in at my work. And I didn't even think about it or put anything together until afterwards. I'm driving a big-ass steering wheel, and I slammed them air brakes. hmm Where are my wrists going? Mm-hmm. So shortly after the accident, my fingers kept going numb. I didn't know what the fuck it was. And then probably about three months of it, they were like, dude, you got carpal tunnel. I went and got tested. My surgeon said my test results were horrible. They were terrible. How the fuck did that happen in a short amount of time like that? I did research. It's not just repetitive motion. Okay. Blunt force trauma can cause rapid symptoms. And I'm trying to fight this right now with lawyers and shit because the state of Virginia only wants to give it to you if it's, uh, or they're, what they're going to say is to fight me is it's repetitive motion. It's repetitive motion. You did da 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 da. Well, I, I know I'm 42 years old and I ain't never had any of these goddamn issues until after that accident. But anyway, so my surgeon, he was like, I will do both of your hands the same day. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, I was wanting to get back to work quick. Right, me too. You know, that's what I need. And I, I can't. I can't be. Yeah, I was like, "Fuck it, man! If I get the one done, then I gotta get the other one done later. Why? Why not just kill two birds with so one stone?" They still worked well. How was the next? I still don't have fully feeling in my hands. Okay, my fingers. I broke this finger uh, r- the weekend before Thanksgiving. That was the first time I had feeling since my s- shit started fucking up last February third from the accident. So, my hands aren't the same. Like, right in here, always hurts, sore. And that's where they cut you? Yeah, they cut so me So, the right procedure here. is cutting you and then shortening these tendons or something, right? So, they go in. It's pretty much your uh, tendon is being overcrowded. Okay. It's not too long. It's too short or it's too long. It could be. So, with mine... It would wake me up anywhere between 10, 11 o'clock at night to like four in the morning. It'd wake me up every night and I could feel it and I knew it was coming on. And I would start to have panic attacks. Cramping? It's like a cramping? It, it is like a cramping to where you, like, it's like you can't do nothing and you know it's coming and it's going to fucking hurt. Hmm. It sucks. <laughs> so mine's like, like you can see the, yeah. Can, so these, they hurt, bro. Oh yeah. And this jaw right here is the worst because I had a hammer in my hand doing this. Right. With side, you know, it wasn't Repetit- this way. Yeah, yeah. Side nailing for years at side and that's how you do it. And I'm jacked. My now, shit is jacked. Also look up, uh, there's another thing. Uh, it's not carpal tunnel. I'll have to look it up because I had never heard of it before, but it almost can cause the same uh, symptoms and shit like that. So definitely do research on it. Because I wish I would have, because I still don't have feeling. Now, the surgeon said, he was like, you may never get the feeling back. Or it could take up to 18 months, two years. But how about hands for strong and being able to do the shit you want to do? I have a lot of limitations now that suck. But it has also helped me with something that I suck at and that I've been always wanting to do with my personal growth. And that's actually asking for help right? when I need it. Okay. I suck at that. But that this has made me. So it scares me. I had a guy come in the other day. His, his wife had just had the surgery done. Her arm was in a sling. Yeah, yeah. He f- didn't have his done in time. Yeah, yeah. And when he had his done, they had to remove this whole muscle right here from his hand. <laughs> God damn. So like that whole muscle is not there. And he's like, I don't have full motion on my hand. Nope. And that's where my shit hurts. Yeah, I can't do certain things like I used to be able to. But. That feeling of that would wake me up in the middle of the night. I I ain't had that yet. And now, granted, I have to go have another EMG test done, which is where they stick you with the needles and shock you. And that's how they see what the electrical stimulation is going down there. 
I go and have that done Friday morning at 9 a.m. Okay. And it's to see my progression. Okay. Because he wants to, like, because my test results were horrible, terrible. Well, I still don't have feeling in all my fingers and da 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 da. So he wants to see what the surgery has done. Like, gotcha. uh, like going back in and seeing. Gotcha. I'd be interested to see what comes out of that too, man. And yeah. check back in with you later, whatever. I, I mean, I know you're going to come get some ink. Tax oh, absolutely, man. Hit. Tax return, baby. Yeah, man. We'll oh, get that man. We'll get get this bad boy some, done. Get you lined up for some ink for sure. Yeah. And, you know, it sucks so bad, bro. Like, fucking, like, when I got put on, like, workers' comp and shit like that, my company, they were trying to get me to quit. And I found this out because I became cool with one of the sales representatives, right? He was like, yeah, nobody likes me here one day. We, him and I were talking. And I was like, why? He's like, because I talk to you. Hmm. And I was like, shut the fuck up, dude. He's like, no, for real. Like, I don't get it. He's like, so the first thing they asked me was what kind of shit you talk about them. And he was like, Wes has never talked shit about anybody that works here. Like, why the fuck do you all hate me? Fucking pine cone just <laughs> fell on the camper. <laughs> yeah, loud. Why do you all hate me because I'm on light duty and fucking got fucked up in an accident? What, I'm supposed to suffer the rest of my life because of some girl's negligence mm -hmm. and hit me because she was on her goddamn cell phone? People love to hate, bro. Like... And People I, love to pray for your downfall. They oh, want to absolutely. hate you all the time. It's so easy. Absolutely. It's so easy to do it. I challenge myself every day to not be that hater. Yeah, I swear to God, exactly. I challenge myself to do that. Why would you want to be? I might not like you. I might yeah, not even yeah. like what you're doing. But you know what? I'm not going to dedicate any energy uh -uh, to disliking nah, that. Because when you do that in those negative, like, they don't need the negative shit. Like, yeah, man, I feel like that's relapse shit. Yeah, exactly. that's the stuff that's made of relapse. Yeah. Relapse is, is made of negativity. It's made yeah. of that fuck the world. Nope. It's it, that's what it's, it's made that of. mentality. And yeah. like, honestly, like I've been getting into like crystals and gems and shit. This is a Oregon is fucking power, uh, positive energy, shit like okay. that. Like I ride with this thing. Like this is my Aquarius and then it's got the amethyst and it's got some gold flakes in there, all okay. different types of shit. Rocks, gems, all that stuff. It has energy. Positive energy that right has on. been here for thousands of years. It's weird. Uh, I never would have thought that what's shit weird, either. What's weird is talking to y'all motherfuckers and all y'all seem to have the same type of thing. So I'm learning a lot hey. through doing this podcast because you're the fourth person I've sat with so far and the similarities in the things that we all say. Right, is right. so interesting. Yeah. So interesting because Dan's talking about you know, weed and, and his connection with nature and shit too. And you to bring that out without any prior knowledge yep. of those things is, is just astounding to me. I, I challenge you to do this. One day, just go out in your yard somewhere, go out on a hike, take your shoes off, be barefoot and stand on the mother earth for 20 to 40 minutes and recharge. It's amazing. Just let the earth come through you, huh? The earth is the provider of everything. It gives us everything that we need to survive, live, da, 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 da. To me, that's like my spiritual, like, because I'm not going to sit here and say, but I believe in God or Jesus, which that's not even their real names. But uh, if I had to pick, like, you know, my spiritual whatever, it'd be nature, the earth. Right. It's the provider of everything, which makes it the power. It's where it all religions probably come from anyways, ain't they? You know? So not much of a religious person either. I don't think I'm much of a spiritual yeah. person either. Well, and I never but really I'm was open, spiritual. I I'm thought it was bullshit. To listening to, to people that have a connection with that stuff because I think it's strong. How like how it's, good do you feel when you go hiking and you see the like most beautiful fucking sunset or So uh yeah, we went to Daytona Beach last year. Yeah. And it was bike week at Daytona Beach. Yep. My favorite part about the whole week yep. was watching the sun come up over the ocean every morning. Try this though. I just watched a like little video and I'm gonna start trying to do this. When the sun rises or sets, you were always told as kids not to look at the sun, right? Well, if you start doing it during those times, it's going to hurt at first. But when you go to sleep that night, supposedly you'll remember your dreams. Hmm. And then you need to start writing it down because it's like past life shit. That 
I was like, I, I got all the fucking into that rabbit hole. I was like, dude, that's pretty fucking cool. I will fucking <laughs> yeah, test I'm that. Try fucking, that shit I will out. test that theory. Yeah, man. There you go. Yeah, so oh, yeah, that's what's up. Well, I appreciate you coming. Absolutely, in, bro. brother. I'm glad I had you a good had time me. Bullshitting with Hell you. Yeah. yeah, you know, maybe we'll link back up and do this hey, again. You never know. Out. Just this talk right here could save somebody's life. And, and you know, that's kind of what it's all about, ain't it, man? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and if it don't really save their life, one love. It, <laughs> it, it takes a minute to learn things. I watch videos to learn certain shit and I don't learn. Turn it off one video. I have to watch a few. It's Sometimes I rewatch the same video. Um, so if I can bring something to people and it just reiterates thing in your life to be positive, be yep. straight, take care of your family, just be a good motherfucker, man. That's yeah, what the world's exactly. all about. Just like how I learned in high school and school. If I had a shitty teacher, I wasn't learning. Right. But if I had somebody that really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. I still retain it to this day. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, man. And there's value in everything that we've experienced. And absolutely. Sharing that, value, sharing that with other hey. people, man, I think is valuable. So pa yeah, pass it on, man. Like for real. Yeah. So like, subscribe, man, you know, subscribe. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting all weirded out right there. So. Cause what would you rather be doing? Spanking your monkey? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> who would? I mean, who would? <laughs> That's an addiction too. <laughs> Fuck me sideways. <laughs> all right. I'm going to watch That's porn now. Perfect end. <laughs>